Good morning, dear students. Uh, today, the chapter we are going to study is electromagnetism. Uh, my name is Farhan Mazar, and the course we are studying is Physics 5054. Let's start. And okay, so this is the first slide on your screen. Let me reduce the size. Okay. So that's good. Okay, the magnetic effect of current. You know, we have learned that whenever the charges move around them, the magnetic field is created. We'll study this in the last chapter. In this chapter, we are again going to concentrate now on the current. For example, you have, uh, if you have a current in a wire, if you have a conductor and current is flowing through that wire, what will happen? That when the current flows through the wire, magnetic field is created around it. For example, if you look at this figure, look at this first figure. Here we have a magnetic compass, and here I have this conductor. This conductor is connected with this battery and a switch, and this switch is open, so there is no current flowing in this conductor. I'm talking about this conductor, okay? It's connected with the battery, but the switch is open, so the current right now is not flowing in it. We have done one thing that we have placed this uh, conductor in a north-south direction. And why I put it in the north-south direction? Because I have put a magnetic compass over it. And you can see that when, when there is no uh, any other magnetic field, what happens if you have a magnetic compass, this needle will always align itself in the north-south direction. So you can see here, this uh, magnetic compass, it has aligned itself with the north-south direction of the, uh, of the world, or the, it has aligned itself with the magnetic field of the earth, because there is no current. So, this is the natural orientation a magnetic compass will have. Now, in this figure, what we did, we closed the switch. When we close the switch, what happens? The current starts flowing from the positive terminal of the battery. We are talking about the conventional current and the current flowed in this direction. And a one remarkable thing you will observe in the magnetic compass that the magnetic compass the needle of the magnetic compass will change its orientation. It will change its direction. When there was no current, the magnetic compass needle was in the north-south of the earth. It was oriented or it was pointing in the north-south of the earth. But when the current started flowing through this conductor, what happens? The needle of the magnetic compass, it changes its direction. It changes orientation. It has another, in, in another direction it's showing now. You know, whenever the magnetic compass needles uh, become steady in a certain direction, the needle of the magnetic compass actually tells you that there is magnetic field and it shows the direction of the magnetic field. The, the needle of the magnetic compass always align itself with the with the magnetic field present there so when there was no current the magnetic compass here aligned itself with the magnetic field of the earth but when you started flowing current through this conductor now the magnetic compass has changed its direction it means now there is magnetic field and this magnetic compass has aligned itself according to that magnetic field this means that the magnetic field here is in this direction, perpendicular to the direction of the current flowing here. So magnetic compass is telling you that when you start flowing the current through the conductor, a new magnetic field is created around the conductor. So from here, you can see that we get the idea that whenever there is current, whenever there is current flowing in a conductor, with that current, we have magnetic field around that conductor. And this experiment is proof of that. So this is called the electromagnetic effect. Whenever the current is flowing 
around it magnetic field is created this is called the magnetic effect you can read also the definition okay i hope that you have understood this story okay so there was a scientist austed in 1820 he was experimenting uh, and uh, in his lab and by accident he discovered one remarkable thing he was working with a battery and a conductor and by chance the conductor was in the north south direction we always when we perform this experiment we always put it in the north south direction so what he did he put the magnet and by chance there was a magnetic compass obviously the when there is no current in this this wire when there is no current in this wire and he put a magnetic compass beside the wire because there is no current and what he observed on the compass that the compass will align itself in the north south direction of the upward <clears throat> but what he observed that whenever he closes this switch whenever he closes this switch what happens this magnetic compass it change its orientation the needle of the magnetic compass is started pointing in another direction it will be it will the magnetic compass will align itself in the east west direction he observes that the north of the magnetic compass whenever you close this switch it it orientate it, it changes direction it, it 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 starts pointing in the east west direction perpendicular to where it should be so you see and he observed another very remarkable thing what he did what he did he put the magnetic compass above this conductor so for example when he put the magnetic compass above this wire uh, for example uh, the magnetic the north of the magnetic compass will point towards the bottom of the page and when he put the magnetic compass below that wire the north of the magnetic compass started pointing in an opposite direction for example if he puts the magnetic compass for example this is the wire he puts the magnetic compass above the wire the north uh, or the needle the north of the needle of the magnetic compass points towards for example east and when he put it below the magnetic compass uh, for it below the conductor the north of the uh, magnetic compass started pointing west so in simple words you can see when the current is flowing through this wire when you put the magnetic compass above the wire the whatever is the direction of the uh, needle of the magnetic compass when you put it below the wire the direction of the magnetic compass the needle of the magnetic compass it points in the opposite direction so for example if we put it above it points towards east when you put it below the uh, conductor it points towards west so that's a remarkable thing it means what does it mean it means that if this is the conductor above the conductor the direction of the magnetic field is towards east and below the conductor the magnetic field is towards west so from here he concluded that if you have a conductor above the conductor if the magnetic field is towards east and below the conductor i am talking about this diagram okay is 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 towards the west it means above the magnetic lines are coming in this way below the wire the magnetic lines are going this way so from here he concluded geniusly that whenever you have a straight conductor and the current is flowing through it around it in circulars in circles concentric circles the magnetic field around a straight conductor is in concentric circles 
so the magnetic field is like a circle circle in the form of circles around that conductor so that was the oster's experiment i hope that uh, i have made it very clear i can tell you one thing once again that he always uh, to do this experiment to make it more easy to understand and to and to describe what we always do we always put this conductor in north south direction of the earth we put it so that it's aligned with the north south of the earth and when we put a magnetic compass here obviously when there is no current the magnetic compass is also aligned is parallel to this line but when we switch on the current it becomes perpendicular to the conductor when you put it above the wire it points for example towards east when you put it below it starts pointing towards west so from here they concluded that when the current is flowing through a conductor uh, around the conductor the, there is magnetic field around the conductor due to the flow of the current and that magnetic field is in circular form around the conductor i hope that you are understanding and you are able to imagine what i am saying okay so here again you can see a clear diagram and you can see whenever this experiment is performed i told you that we always put this conductor this blue colored co conductor in the north south direction okay so 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 it's, it becomes very easy to understand so you see here uh we have connected it with the battery here we have a resistor resistor is used so that so not too much current comes here in the wire and here we have a switch and the switch is open it means no current is flowing through this blue conductor so one magnetic compass is above the wire and one magnetic compass is below the wire and you can see that both the magnetic uh, uh, sorry magnetic compasses they are pointing towards the north of the earth so that means that the direction of the magnetic field here is towards the north there is no current the magnetic compass which is one magnetic compass is above the conductor one magnetic compass is below the conductor they both are pointing in the same direction in the north of the world and which means that the magnetic lines here the magnetic field here is in this direction they both are showing the same direction of the magnetic uh, magnetic field so they are showing the both pointers are in the same direction okay so i hope you understand this diagram in this diagram no current is flowing because this switch is open okay now this is the next figure you see here uh, we have closed the switch when you close the switch obviously the current starts flowing through the this conductor blue conductor one interesting thing is still in the north and the south direction the conductor is in the north and the south direction but you see when the current starts flowing here the magnetic compass which is above the wire it started it started pointing towards the east and the magnetic compass which is below the wire it has started pointing towards the west it means that the above this conductor the direction of the magnetic field is towards east and below the conductor the direction of the magnetic field is towards the west so from here uh, we can conclude that if you have a straight conductor and the current starts flowing through it the it it due to the flow of the current naturally the magnetic field is created around that conductor and the direction of the magnetic field we came to know by the putting the compasses there that the direction of the magnetic the magnetic field is circular so if it's it is the conductor so what will happen the magnetic field is circular so above it's in this direction for example and because it's circular let's say circular so above it's this direction then at below it will be in this direction i hope that uh, you understand this <clears throat> see see this is uh, this is the written uh, the experiment which was written there when electric current is passed through the wire from south to north directions and the wire is placed over oh the compass needle the compass needle get deflected towards west direction 
uh, this is called snow rule or reversing the direction of the current in the wire the compass needle gets deflected in the opposite direction when current is switched off then there is no deflection in the compass needle the deflection of the compass needle whenever there is current in the wire shows that a current carrying wire produces a magnetic field around it this is called the uh, electromagnetic effect i hope that you have understood this and okay so so dear students i am back due to internet connectivity you know we have to disconnect and i am I'm, i'm back again i hope that this slide you have understood by by now you are able to tell one thing that when the current is flowing through a conductor magnetic field is created around a conductor okay let's move to the next to our next slide okay so here we have uh, here i'm trying to show you see here we have shown a conductor and the current is flowing in the towards the top of the page the current is going upward and around that conductor naturally the magnetic field will be created when the current will be flowing through it so around this you can see that we have shown concentric circles and th these concentric circles are actually representing the magnetic field and we know that uh, in around the uh, straight conductor circular magnetic fields uh, magnetic field is in a circular uh, manner and that can be represented with the circular magnetic field lines and they are concentric circles and when the current is going in the upward direction towards the top of the page the magnetic field in it is in the anti clockwise uh, manner here in this diagram you can see the current is going towards the bottom of the page the current is going downward and it's a straight conductor the magnetic field is created around it and the magnetic field be circular the magnetic field is represented with the concentric circles magnetic field lines are actually represented with the concentric circles and you can see that the concentric circles here the we have shown arrows on these circles and these circles uh, the arrows on these circles shows the direction of the magnetic field and here the direction of the magnetic field is clockwise so one thing which you should understand is that when you have a straight conductor around that straight conductor uh, magnet when the current flows through that conductor magnetic field is created and the magnetic field its magnetic field lines are in the form of concentric circles and in this diagram and uh, the circles are in the direction I mean, they are in anti clockwise direction and here in this diagram the circles are in the clockwise manner so whenever there is current in a conductor magnetic field is created around it and that magnetic field is in circular manner okay so here we go here we have uh you know in the last diagram last the last diagram here when the current was going upward the direction of the current uh, the magnetic field sorry was anti clockwise when the current was going downward the direction of the magnetic field around that conductor was clockwise so the question is how do i know that the direction of the magnetic field in the around the straight conductor will be clockwise or the direction of the magnetic field around this straight conductor will be anti clockwise or it will be clockwise so we have a law and that law is called right hand grip rule so in the right hand grip rule what we do let's say we have a conductor like in this diagram we have a conductor and the current is going uh, is flowing in that conductor the direction of the current flowing is in the upward direction so what you will do you will hold that conductor in your right hand okay so hold the conductor in your right hand in such a way that the uh, the 
your thumb is pointing in the direction of the current. And when I say current, I mean conventional current. So for example, the, if you are holding that conductor in your right hand, so this thumb is in the direction of the current, then the curls of your fingers, the curls of these fingers, they represent the magnetic field. So in this diagram, you see the, with the IE is showing the current and the curls and the thumb is in the direction of the current and the curls of his finger, they are showing the direction of the magnetic field, which will be there around that straight conductor. This is called the right hand grip rule. It's very easy. I hope you will understand it. Okay. So here, another example, uh, you can see that here we have a, a conductor. The current conductor is horizontal and the current is flowing through it. And when the current is flowing through it and you can hold it in your right hand and when you hold it in the in your right hand and the thumb is direct pointing towards the uh, direction of the current the curls of your finger they show the direction of the magnetic field so it means that the direction of the magnetic field will be a uh, clockwise around this conductor the magnetic field will be in this in the magnetic field lines will be represented with the concentric circles and the direction of the magnetic field will be clockwise so this i am telling by using the right hand grip rule and remember one thing we are talking about the conventional current here electric current is uh, the word electric current is written but actually this is not electric current it's conventional current Current means conventional current. Again, this is uh, another example of use of the right hand grip rule. I hope that you are able to use it. Okay, here uh, another very good example. Here you can see we have two diagrams, and let's let's consider this first diagram. Here you can see I have a battery, and with this battery I have connected a conductor. And this is the positive terminal of the battery. This is the negative terminal of the battery. The current. Like the, with the blue color, he has represented the uh, electron flow, but we are talking about conventional current. Conventional current is going from the positive terminal and is going towards the negative terminal. So the conventional current is flowing here in this blue conductor. The conventional current is going downward. So here we have a, a board, a paper, and we have drilled a hole here and the conductor is passing through it. So this board is perpendicular. The plane of the board is perpendicular to this conductor. So when you will uh, apply the right hand grip rule and hold this conductor in your right hand in such a way that your thumb is pointing downward, it means the current is going downward. The curls of my fingers are telling me that the direction of the magnetic field around it will be clockwise. So you can see here we have we have shown here uh, concentric circles. Concentric circles are actually uh, showing you the magnetic field lines around this conductor, and they all are the arrows on those magnetic field lines are showing that these magnetic field lines are clockwise. So you see, this is another example of uh, magnetic uh, uh, means uh, right hand grip rule. You can tell the direction of the of the magnetic field lines around a straight conductor. So here you see what we have done here. We have reversed the direction of the current. By reversing the direction of the current, I means I have reversed here the polarity of the battery. I have reversed the battery. Now the positive is downward and the negative is upward. Now the conventional current is flowing in this direction okay now the conventional current flows from the positive to the negative terminal of the battery so here in this blue conductor the 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 conventional current is going upward and here we have a paper a cardboard and a paper on it and the the plane of the cardboard is perpendicular to the conductor so the current the conventional current is going upward so we are interested that how the magnetic field lines will be 
what will be the direction of the magnetic field line. So you can apply the right hand rule, take your right hand, hold this conductor in your right hand in such a way that your thumb is pointing uh, in the direction of the current. And the curls of the right hand will be telling you the direction of the magnetic field. So these uh, curls of my finger are telling me that the direction of the magnetic field will be anti-clockwise. So you can see here in this diagram we have shown that the direction of the magnetic lines around that conductor is now anti-clockwise. So the magnetic lines are represented with the concentric circles uh, around that straight line conductor. So you see one thing interesting here. When the direction of the conventional current through this conductor was downward, the magnetic field lines were clockwise. And when the direction of the uh, current was in the upward, conventional current was in the upward direction in the same conductor, the magnetic field lines were anti-clockwise. You see, when you reverse the direction of the current in the direction of the current in the conductor, the direction of the magnetic field around it also reverses. So when the direction of the current reverses, the direction of the magnetic field lines will also reverse around it. So this is the fact. So if the direction of the magnetic field was uh, clockwise. After reversing the uh, direction of the current, the direction of the magnetic field lines will become anti-clockwise. So this is the effect of changing the direction of the current. So I hope that you have understood. This is also a good example for understanding the right hand grip rule. This is also a good example of understanding the elect uh, magnetic electromagnetic effect of the current. And I hope that it's clear to you. These two diagrams are clear to you. Here, um, the same diagram which you which you saw in this uh, figure, the same diagram is represented again here. But here, the the method of representation of the conductor is little different. Here, we have not shown that whole diagram. Now we have taken the top view, you understand the top view of that paper through which the conductor was uh, passing. We have taken the top view. Now the conductor is represented with the cross and in this diagram the conductor is represented with the dot. When you represent the conductor with a cross, with a small cross uh, at the center, this means that the current is going into the page it's like the back of an arrow it means that the arrow is going away from you this means you are looking at the back of an arrow so the arrow is going away from you so this cross means that the current is going into the page and this dot actually it means that the arrow is coming towards you so you are looking at the tip of the arrowhead so this dot whenever this dot is represented on a paper it means that the current is coming out of the paper. And when the current is represented with the cross, it means that the current is going into the paper. So, for example, let's say, if the current is going into the paper, so apply the right hand grip rule. So take your right hand, for example, the current is going into the paper. So my fingers are telling me that the direction of the magnetic field will be and i'm looking from here the direction of the magnetic field lines will be clockwise so that's why you can see here the magnetic field lines are represented with concentric circles and the arrows on them shows that the direction of the magnetic field lines will be clockwise so in this diagram you can see the current is represented with the dot and dot means that the current is coming towards you or it means that the current is coming out of the page. So if you suppose, okay, hold it, hold this conductor, this binary conductor in your right hand in such a way that your thumb is pointing out of this screen, out of this screen, out of this page, then the curls of my finger, they from when I see from here, the curls of my finger are in the anti-clockwise manner. It means that the magnetic field lines around it will be in the anti-clockwise manner. That's why you see around this conductor, 
the magnetic field lines are represented with the concentric circles. And on those concentric circles, the arrows shows that the direction of the magnetic field will be anti-clockwise. So here again, you see, we have learned how to apply the right hand grip rule. And we also have learned that the direction of the current or a conductor can be represented with a cross in the center or with a dot in the center. When uh, a conductor is presented with a cross, it means that the current is going into the page or into that plane or into that screen. And when the current is represented with a dot, it means that the current is coming out of that page or the current is coming towards you or it means that the current is coming out of the screen. I hope that you have understood this. This is showing the electro, uh, electromagnetic effect around, created around a, a straight conductor. I hope it's clear to you. Let's move to the next top, uh, next slide. Okay, here again, you can see that the magnitude of the current. Okay, for example, here you can see I have shown you two diagrams. In the first diagram, uh, we have represented a conductor with a dot in the center. And when I represent a conductor with a dot in the center, it means that the current is coming towards me. It means that the current is coming out of the page. It means that the current is coming out of the screen directly towards you. So that's why it is represented with a dot. Dot means the head of the arrowhead of the uh, arrowhead of uh, a vector coming towards you. So the current is coming out of the paper. So if I hold it in my right hand, the, the, and in such a way that my thumb is in the direction of the current, so my finger, the curves of my finger when I see from here, are in the anti-clockwise manner. So the direction of the magnetic field lines around this conductor will be in the anti-clockwise manner. In this diagram, the current is still coming towards me. The current is still coming out of the screen. The current is still coming out of the page. And if I apply the law, right hand grip rule, and uh, the, the direction of the magnetic field lines should be anti-clockwise, and it is anti-clockwise. But there is a difference in these two diagrams. Here you can see the amount of current is smaller. When the amount of current is smaller, the distance between the magnetic lines is larger. That means that the magnetic field around it is weak. And in the same conductor, when we, I increase the amount of current flowing through it, when you have increased the amount of current flowing through it, the magnetic field lines are concentric circles, but now they are very close to each other. This shows that the, that the magnetic field has become stronger. So from here we conclude one thing. If the amount of current flowing in the, in, in the conductor is smaller, the magnetic field produced around it will be weaker. When you increase the amount of current flowing through the conductor, the magnetic field produced around it will be stronger. So that's the relationship between the current amount of current flowing through a, a, a conductor and the um, strength of the magnetic field around that conductor. Larger the amount of current, the stronger will be the magnetic field. Here, uh, here we have uh, uh, another uh, very interesting uh, phenomena which takes place and it's a very useful uh, it's the very first diagram of uh, a more complicated thing so if you understand this diagram then you will be able to understand the next diagrams also here we have a single conductor but it is not only just straight conductor here we have a conductor we have a paper and in the paper we have drilled two holes and the same conductor is like this and it has a u-shaped bend and the same conductor is going down so if you bring the uh, here if you connect this side with the positive terminal of the battery and this side of the conductor with the negative uh, 
terminal of the battery so you see what will happen that the current will flow from here and from here and it will go down so if i only concentrate on this portion and on this portion let's see what happens so you know here you connected it with the positive terminal so it's a magnetic field pattern around a flat coil it's like a coil okay you same conductor and uh, it bend here and the same conductor goes back so the current is coming through this uh, side and it goes to this side back to the battery so just just focus on this point here the current is going in the upward direction so apply the right hand grip rule here hold the conductor in your right hand such a way that your uh, thumb is in the direction of the current which is upward the curves of your fingers are telling you the direction of the magnetic field so at this point at this point the magnetic field due to the flow of the current here in the conductor the magnetic field lines around this point around this conductor here will be in the form of concentric circles and the direction of the magnetic field lines will be anti clockwise you can predict this by you see my fingers are telling me that the direction of the magnetic field lines will be anti clockwise okay so the current through this conductor comes here and from here it goes back so if you if you concentrate or if you pay attention to this point so you see here the current is going downward so if you apply the right hand grip rule here hold this conductor in your right hand such a way that uh, the direction of the magnetic lines uh, the direction of the current is downward so this thumb is pointing in the direction of the current the curves of my finger if i look at here they are telling me that the direction of the magnetic field lines will be clockwise so here the magnetic field lines will be concentric circles and the direction of the magnetic field lines will be clockwise so here on this point the magnetic field lines are anti clockwise and because the current is going in upward direction the conventional current is going in the upward direction here the direction of the magnetic field lines is clockwise the reason is here in this at this point the current is going downward so you can see these circles but another very interesting thing you will observe that the magnetic field lines here are anti clockwise the magnetic field lines here are clockwise apparently they are opposite to each other the magnetic field lines on the right side of the coil they are anti clockwise on the sorry on the left side they are anti clockwise or uh, and uh, the, the, the 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 portion of the coil uh, on the right side it has clockwise uh, magnetic field lines around it but when you look at in the middle of this coil here you see the magnetic lines are going in this way due to this conductor and the magnetic lines of this conductor are uh, the magnetic lines due to this conductor are also in the same direction so in the middle here the direction of the magnetic field lines is same so that's a that's an interesting thing you see the magnetic lines here due to this conductor are going in this direction and the magnetic lines here due to this conductor are also going in the in the same direction so in the middle of this flat coil the direction of the magnetic lines uh, produced by the this side of the conductor and due to this side of the conductor both the magnetic the both the sides magnetic lines have the same direction in the middle of the flat coil that's an interesting thing so i hope that this diagram is clear to you and the, the magnetic field lines here and the interesting things about this magnetic field lines i hope that you are able to understand it okay let's move to the next thing okay again here you see um, now we have taken a uh, uh, another view uh, of a coil and apparently this coil will be in the form of a ring and this is not joined here the current is coming through this and it is going down again so 
So it's a coil also, the same coil, okay? So from here, the current is going up. So the magnetic field uh, lines around this portion of the coil will be anti-clockwise. Here, the current is going down. So the magnetic field lines here will be uh, clockwise because the current is going down. By the right-hand grip rule, I am able to tell the direction of the magnetic field lines. So, but the interesting thing is that the magnetic field lines here, they are anti-clockwise, the magnetic field lines here, they are clockwise. But if you look at the middle portion, the magnetic field lines are going this way due to this coil, this portion of the conductor. But the magnetic field lines due to this conductor are also going in the same direction. So in the center, in the middle of this flat coil, you can see that the magnetic field lines due to this portion or due to that portion in the middle of, uh, of the flat coil, they all have the same direction. So, uh, let me bring this back here so you can understand. Okay, so again, um, and, uh, and there is this is another way of representing the same diagram. You see, uh, mm, let me show you that. So from here, the current was coming out of this plane, and here the current was going into this plane. Uh, I'm talking about this plane, okay? This 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 paper or this cardboard or this table. Uh, here the current is coming out of this plane, and here the current is going into this plane. So the same diagram, now I am representing with a different uh, style or different. So this is again representing the same, uh, same that the coil and the flat coil. And here I represented the conductor with a dot. And you know, when I represent a conductor with a dot, it means that the current is coming out of this paper, or it means that the current is coming out of this plane. And here I represented the conductor with a cross. It means that the current is going into this paper, or it means that the current is going into this table, or it means that the current is going into the screen. This dot means that the current is coming out of this screen, and that cross means that uh, the current is going into uh, that screen, into that paper, or we say into the page. And this dot means the current is coming out of that page. So if you apply, for example, if you apply the right hand rule here, the, the here, the, the conductor is represented with a dot and it is representing the previous diagram. So dot means that the current is coming out of. So apply the right hand rule, it tells you that the direction of the magnetic field lines will be anti-clockwise. So they have represented it with the black lines and they are anti-clockwise. And around this uh, cross, uh, you know, the cross means that the magnetic, the current is coming, going into the screen. The current is going into the paper. So apply the right hand rule, hold the conductor in your right hand, such way. My thumb is pointing towards the screen. It means that the, my, when I look from here, so the, the curves of my finger are telling me that the direction of the magnetic field lines will be clockwise. He represented them with the green with the green lines. So one remarkable thing here, again, one very interesting one very interesting thing is that the magnetic field lines due to this conductor are anti-clockwise, represented with the black circles, and the magnetic field lines here due to this uh, conductor is uh, 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 clockwise, and they are represented with the green. But the very interesting thing is that when you look at them in the middle portion, the direction of the magnetic field lines are represented with the black color and the direction of the magnetic field lines represented with the green color, they in the middle of that coil, the green and the black, they have the same direction. So it's, 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 it's very interesting. So again here, look at the same diagram represented again. And uh, it's the same diagram. The same diagram is at least the fourth diagram, which I'm showing you. It's, it's actually the, the four diagrams are actually representing the same diagram. 
but the method of representing them is a little different. Here you see that it's representing basically a coil. So here the current, the coil is coming out of the plane, and here the coil is going into the plane. So the current is coming out of the paper here, and through, from here the current is going into the paper. So the, all the four diagrams which I have shown you, they are the same thing. So here dot dot means the current is coming out of the paper. The magnetic field lines around it by applying the right hand grip rule, you can tell the magnetic field lines around it will be uh, in the in the you can see that they will be in the uh, um, anti-clockwise manner and the magnetic field lines here around this cross they will be in the clockwise manner so um, this figure this figure the this figure and this figure they are all basically the same figures okay so you can see that in the middle of the of the coil the direction of the magnetic field line due to both the sides is same so and let's go to the next one now uh, in our previous uh, diagram we were only studying a single loop of the coil so suppose if you have uh, more than one uh, loop of the coil for example, we studied only a single loop. Okay, in the previous four diagrams, we studied a, a flat coil, and in that flat coil, we have only a single loop. But now in this diagram, you see I have multiple loops, more than one loop. I have here, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So uh, here in this diagram, you see the current is coming from here. The current is coming out of the plane, and from here the current is going into the paper. So, if I apply the right hand grip rule here, the direction of the magnetic field lines will be anti clockwise. Here it will be anti clockwise, and here the current is going into the paper. So, I apply the right hand grip rule, and the magnetic field lines will be anti clockwise. So here, sorry, uh, what I said, anti-clockwise, it will be clockwise, sorry, here. Here, the magnetic field lines around it will be clockwise. Here, it will be anti-clockwise. And we know that in the middle, the magnetic field lines due to this point and the magnetic field lines due to this conductor, they both will have the same direction. So when you have multiple coils like this, so not a single loop, but multiple loops like this, the magnetic field lines will be such that in the center, they will have the same magnetic field direction. The magnetic line, magnetic field lines will be same. So this is called, when you have multiple loops, we call it a solenoid. What we call it? A solenoid. It's not called a flat coil. Then we call it, when you have multiple coils, and uh, like a spring, you have a coil like a spring, what we call it, we call it a solenoid. So solenoid is called this, uh, this shape is called a solenoid, but it means when you have a conductor and it's in the spiral form, you call it solenoid. So when you pass current through the solenoid, you see the solenoid starts behaving like a, if, if you remember, in our last chapter, we have studied that this magnetic field pattern is the magnetic field pattern of a bar magnet. If you forget this coil, this solenoid, put a bar magnet here if the north is here and the south is here. From here, the magnetic lines will be going out and, and here the magnetic lines will be going in. So you see, when you have a solenoid and current is flowing through the solenoid, the solenoid starts behaving like a bar magnet. The, uh, the magnetic field pattern of the solenoid is exactly same like the magnetic field pattern of a bar magnet. So here this side will be behaving like a north pole and this side of the solenoid will be behaving like a south pole. So this is a solenoid and our discussion is on now on the solenoid. Okay. So here again, you see, we have tried and tried to show you the solenoid. Here we have a coil, a conductor, and what we have done, 
we have taken that conductor and we have made a spiral with that conductor like a spring shape so and that spiral we have introduced conventional current so from here the current is entering in this conductor and from this side the current is going up from the other side the current is going down from this my side the current is going up and the current is going down current is going up the current is flowing in that white conductor and that white conductor is in the is in the in the spring type shape uh, so spiral shape and we call it a solenoid so interesting thing is when you have this shape solenoid and the current flows through it the magnetic field pattern produced or induced in it is exactly like the magnetic field pattern of a bar magnet so you can see here we have represent so on this the current is uh, the magnetic field lines are coming out of from here and they are going and from here they are entering into the solenoid so this is exactly the magnetic field pattern of a bar magnet so from here the magnetic lines are coming out so this will be the north pole if you the this electromagnet this solenoid which will be acting like an electromagnet so here we will have the north pole and here you will have the south pole okay again again we are trying to tell you how to is this is another way of representing a solenoid and sometimes in paper they represent the solenoid in this manner you see here i have on this side the i have represented the, the conductor with dots so, and on this side i have represented the conductor with the crosses so it means that from here the current is coming out and from and from the above side the current is going in the page so from here current is coming out from here the current is going in and so when this represents a solenoid basically so what happens and uh, when you flow the current through this solenoid the magnetic field is produced around it and you can see it's exactly the previous diagram but the manner in which we show the spiral is different it's here we represent it with the dots here we represent it with the crosses so current is coming out from here current coming out and then going in again coming out and again going in so it's representing basically a solenoid so the magnetic field produced around it and will be like the bar the magnetic field pattern will be exactly like the magnetic field pattern of a bar magnet so here you can see that the uh, the magnetic lines are coming out and from here the magnetic lines are going in here the magnetic lines are coming out and here the magnetic lines are going uh, in so this side of this solenoid will be having like a north pole and this side of the solenoid will be behaving like a south pole okay so uh, we come to know uh, we uh, if the current is flowing through a solenoid and uh, i have been telling you that this side of the solenoid will be behaving like a north pole and this side of the solenoid will be behaving like a south pole so we have a law law we have a law and by using that law you can tell that which side of the solenoid will be north pole and which side of the solenoid will be south pole so the law is very simple this is called the right hand rule for a solenoid and this is the second right hand rule you know the first on first right hand uh, right hand rule is the right hand grip rule for the straight conductor uh, which we have studied in this chapter and this is the second right hand rule and this is the second right hand rule for the solenoid you see uh, in this what you do uh, you hold the solenoid in such a way in your right hand you hold the solenoid in such a way that your fingers are along the direction of the current so for example uh, from the front side the current is going up and from the behind side the current is going down from the front side the current is going up so you will hold the solenoid in your right hand in such a way that your fingers here the fingers the fingers represent the direction of the current so you hold this solenoid in your right hand in such a way that your fingers are aligned with the conventional current so wherever your thumb will point that will be the north pole so for example from this side the current is going up and then from the other side the current is going down 
so if i hold the conduct uh, the solenoid in my right hand such a way that the my, that these fingers are in the direction of the current then this thumb will be pointing towards the north so on on this left corner it will be north pole and on this and on this corner obviously opposite to that south pole so this is called the right hand rule for a solenoid i hope that you have understood and we will have further examples on this right hand grip rule okay here you can see again another slide on the diagram so this is a solenoid and uh, you know we have put a, a rod inside it so you can clearly understand that from uh, the, here you have a coil here you have a conductor and you have wound that conductor you have made the spiral with the help of that conductor on that rod so this makes the diagram easier to understand that from which direction the current is going up or from which direction the current is going down so uh, the current is entering from here so and you see that uh, the current is coming from here up and from that side is going down so from the side which of this rod which is facing us is the current is going up and from the other side of the rod the current is going down in this coil so you will hold this solenoid in your right hand in such a way that uh, because the current is the, the fingers they are in the direction of the current in the solenoid and wherever your thumb will point the thumb of your right hand will point that will be the north of this solenoid so my thumb is pointing towards the right uh, the left side sorry so this is this will be the north and this will be the south so this is another example of using the right hand rule for the solenoid to find the north and the south of the of the solenoid okay again you can see that here we have again shown a simple diagram magnetic field of a solenoid the magnetic field pattern made around a solenoid we can tell its direction at the north and the south and we can draw its magnetic field pattern and we can predict its magnetic field pattern by applying the right hand rule you see here i have shown a rod and on that rod we have wound a we have made a spiral with the help of a conductor and from here the positive terminal of the battery so the current conventional current is coming from here from here the current is going up then from the other side it's going down from here the current is going up from the other side it's going down from here the current is going uh, uh, up and down okay so the same solenoid is represented here so the current from the face of that solenoid i mean from the side of the solenoid which is towards us uh, the current is going up and from the other side of the solenoid the current in the coil is going down so hold this solenoid in your right right hand in such a way that your fingers they are in the direction of the current so the current is going up okay so from like hold it like this my thumb is pointing towards the uh, the left so on the left side we will have here you will have a north and obviously on the other side you will have the south so here you have the north and here you have the south so the magnetic field line if you are asked to draw the magnetic field pattern so from the north the magnetic field lines will be coming out and from the south the magnetic field lines will be going in and inside the solenoid you know the magnetic field lines flow from south to north but outside the magnet they flow from north to south i hope that you have understood this and uh, let's move to the next slide okay another and there is another way of telling that uh, which side of the solenoid which end of the solenoid is the north pole and which end of the solenoid is a uh, south pole if if uh, and try to understand what i am saying if you bring the solenoid the, the 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 one side of the solenoid not the side uh, this end of the solenoid in front of your eyes and when you look at the solenoid on from this side and you get the feeling that the current in the loops is flowing in the anti clockwise manner if you observe that the current is flowing in the anti clockwise manner so that and will be anti anti has an n in it okay so 
anti-clockwise manner means that this is a north pole and for example if you look at this end of the solenoid when you look, you will look from here you will feel that the current is rotating in this coil in the clockwise manner if you look at uh, uh, end of a solenoid and when you look at the solenoid from that end and you get the feeling that the current is uh, moving around the solenoid in a clockwise manner then that end of the solenoid will be definitely a south pole so how you remember it if the when you bring for example for example if this is a solenoid for example this is a solenoid okay so this is a solenoid so bring the solenoid in front of your eyes for example i'm looking at this end of the solenoid this end of the solenoid okay so i will bring it in front of me for example when i look at this end i get the feeling that the current is moving around the solenoid in an anti clockwise manner if the current is moving in anti n anti anti clockwise manner then that side will be the north pole for example if i bring the one end of the solenoid in front of me okay and i look at that end and i get the feeling that the current is flowing in the clockwise manner then that side will be the south pole in the anti clockwise manner if the current is you get the feeling that the current is rotating around the solenoid in an anti anti n anti clockwise manner it will be the north pole if you get the feeling that on that end the current is rotating in a clockwise manner then that end will be a south pole so this is the second method of telling that uh, if you have a solenoid and you don't know the direction of the current so you can by by using this method also you can tell that the right end for example the right end here is this a north pole or it is a south pole so this is another way of deciding on the the polarity the of the ends of a solenoid i hope that this is clear to you okay again here we have you know um here we have a coil uh, this is a conductor and this is a frame on that we have made that spiral the solenoid and you can see that from there the current is going down from here the current is going up from the other side the current will go down from here up down on the other side it will go down from here it will go up from the other side it will go down from here the current will go up okay if you look at the this end of the of this solenoid when you will bring this end of the solenoid in front of your face and you will look at use your imagination if i bring this end this right end of the solenoid in front of my face and i observe that how the current is revolving around it i will get the feeling that the current is moving in the clockwise manner around the solenoid in the coil the current is running in the clockwise manner so this side is definitely a south pole and when you bring this left end of the solenoid in front of you for example you bring it in front of you in front of your eyes and you look at that end and you get the feeling that the current in that coil is moving in a anti clockwise the n is very important anti clockwise manner then it means that this n is a north pole i hope that you have understood not if the current is rotating in a anti clockwise manner it's a north pole of the solenoid and if the current is uh, in a clockwise manner then this is the that end is the south pole of the solenoid so you see we have two methods of deciding on the poles of the solenoids ends uh, one is the right hand rule for the solenoid and one is this method and i hope that it's clear to you okay so when you have a solenoid uh, that spiral thing and when you flow current through it you see it has magnetic field and the magnetic field is exactly like the it's an electromagnet and the magnetic field produced is exactly like the field of a 
is it's exactly like the field pattern of a bar magnet and the strength of that magnetic field is affected by different factors and you know the there are three factors one factor is that how much current is flowing through that conductor so the larger the amount of current flowing through that conductor the stronger will be the electromagnet of the, the sol that solenoid will produce a stronger uh, electromagnetic field so more current more stronger the magnet and uh, electromagnet it will be the if you reduce the amount of current flowing through the solenoid the magnetic field produced will be weak so that's the first factor and the number of and, and another very important thing is the number of the turns of the coil and for example if in a certain length so for example if this is the if this is the length of the solenoid and you have here 20 turns so on in this length we have 20 turns of the coil i mean the turns of the coil so if you increase the number of turns uh for example from 20 make it 30 for example from 20 make it 40 for example in the same length if you increase the number of turns of the coil if there are more number of turns of the coil and the the, the magnetic field produced will be stronger the less the number of turns in the same length, the magnetic field will be weaker. If you increase the number of turns in that length uh, of the coil, the magnetic field produced will be stronger. And we use a technical sentence, we say that the number of turns per unit length. If you increase the number of turns per unit length, the magnetic field will become stronger. If you reduce the number of turns per unit length in a solenoid, the magnetic field will become weaker. So greater the number of turns, the greater the strength of the magnetic field. Another very interesting thing is a third factor on which the strength of the magnetic field depends of the solenoid is that if you have made that spiral and that spiral of the copper wire is hollow, you just made it like a spiral, like a spring and nothing inside it. So the magnetic field will be, it will have a magnetic field, but it will be not that strong. So what we do, we put a rod of iron in it. So what we do, we put, we have a rod of iron, soft iron normally we use, soft iron rod, and on that soft iron rod, we will uh, wind the copper wire. So when you put a soft iron core inside the solenoid, the magnetic field will, will become stronger. So you see, how you can uh, increase the strength of a magnetic field of a solenoid uh, three things increase the current flowing through the solenoid increase the number of turns of the coil per unit length and the number of turns per unit length increase that and increase uh, and put a soft iron core inside the solenoid so these three factors they affect the uh, strength of the magnetic field uh, of the solenoid. I hope that you have understood this. Okay, so here uh, we have another uh, another uh, thing which is happening in the nature. Uh, for example, uh, if you have a north and south pole, for example, here I have the north pole, here I have the south pole, and you have a conductor. And for example, uh, here you see um, the it, we will have magnetic field, and that magnetic field is represented with the magnetic field lines, and those magnetic field lines are going from north to south. So here we have represented it with the blue color. So they have just shown a single line, magnetic field line, but there are um, many many magnetic field lines which start from the north and they go to the south. So here we have magnetic field lines which are going from north to south. Okay, dear students, I'm back due to internet connectivity, you know, we have my lecture was interrupted. Okay, so we were talking about these. Uh, the, here we have two prominent magnets. We have North Pole, we have South Pole. And 
<clears throat> here we have a conductor and one thing which you will observe that if you place a, a, a magnet a, a conductor sorry perpendicular to the magnetic field lines you can see this uh, conductor is placed per perpendicular to the magnetic field lines the magnetic field lines are going from north to south from north to south they are going the conductor is perpendicular to them so when the current will start flowing through this uh, conductor uh, what will happen that this uh, conductor will experience a force here the conventional current is flowing in this direction and you will observe that when you will switch on the current and the current will start flowing in this conductor this conductor will experience a force in downward direction so this wire will naturally automatically when the current will flow through this wire this wire will experience a force and this wire will move downward so this wire will go down it will start moving towards the bottom of the page or the bottom of the screen so this is called motor effect so what is the motor effect what is motor effect if you have a conductor and you have placed the conductor perpendicular to the magnetic field lines when the current will flow through the, the conductor the conductor will experience a force and that conductor will move it will move in this situation the conductor have moved downward i hope that this is clear to you okay let's go to the next one okay here again you can see we have shown two conductor uh, two magnets here here we have a bar magnet here we have a bar magnet here we have the north pole of this magnet here we have the south pole of this magnet so the magnetic field lines are here from north to south so here they have shown the magnetic field lines and here we have placed a conductor and that conductor is perpendicular to these magnetic field lines and when the current will start flowing in the conductor in this conductor this conductor will experience a force in the downward direction okay so here uh, we will learn that how we predict that this this directional force it will experience a force either it will be in the downward direction or it will be in the uh, upward direction <clears throat> one thing which is in our syllabus is that uh, the current the magnetic field lines and the force they are perpendicular to each other so okay let's move to the next diagram okay so you can see that the motor effect is the term used when a current carrying wire in the presence of a magnetic field experiences a force a simple experimental demonstration will show you that this is true like the two experiments we have done on the previous two slides place a wire that is connected to a power pack in between the poles of a horseshoe magnet turn on the power and the wire moves often the mo the movement is only very slight because a typical horseshoe magnet is not very strong the force depends upon a number of things the force which is experienced by the conductor that depends upon the number of things how strong the magnetic field is inside the loop of the magnetic coil as it is usually iron and iron is a good conductor of magnetic attraction how much current is flowing through the wire the angle formed between the wire and the direction of the magnetic field uh, in our course normally the angle is 90 degree uh, but when you will study the same topic in a levels or in your fsc and then we can have a different angle also the length of the wire carrying the current in the magnetic field so these are the factors on which the the, the magnitude and the direction of the force depends okay here we have another uh, experiment which will be demonstrating the motor effect you can see here we have a horseshoe magnet it's a permanent magnet is in the shape of a horseshoe you can see here we have a horseshoe magnet and this is the north pole of the horseshoe magnet and this is the south pole of the horseshoe magnet here we have a stand and with this stand we have these two uh, connections 
and with these connection here we have two loops and these loops and there we have a conductor the name of the conductor is a b c d and we are interested in the side bc and this through this connection this uh, coil this rectangular coil a b c d is connected with a battery and this is the positive terminal of the battery so when you will close this switch so from here the current will come a b c d and from here the current will go back and we are talking about conventional current and conventional current you know starts from the positive terminal of the battery and goes to the negative terminal of the battery so this coil due to these rings this coil is free to rotate okay this coil a b c d is free to rotate it's like a swing you know swing it moves um, backward and uh, forward backward and forward it's like the swing so here these connections they are uh, uh, they are frictionless and this coil if it ex experiences a force either outward or inward uh, or either it experiences a force to the right or to the left so it will experience uh, if it experiences a force this coil will swing swing like a swing okay so when you will close this switch you see here we have a 9 volt drive cell and when you will connect the when you will close this switch and uh, when you will close this switch the current will start flowing and when the current will flow uh, through the uh this bc side of the abcd coil we are interested in this bc side actually of the coil so in the bc so when the current will flow through it you know this coil the magnetic field of the horseshoe is from north pole to south pole so the magnetic field here is exactly upward so this conductor bc it is a portion of the abcd coil and we are interested only in the bc the current is flowing from b to c so the direction of the current and this conductor they are perpendicular to the magnetic field the magnetic field is going upward from north to south so here we have the magnetic lines which are going directly from north to south and the conductor and the current in it they are perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field so when this current this conventional current flows through the bc so what happen uh, that bc experience a force uh, towards the right it experience towards it experience a force towards right to due to that this uh, coil abcd it will move it will rotate in the anti clockwise manner so it's a very good experiment so you see when you have a conductor placed uh, perpendicular to the magnetic field lines and you flow current through the conductor the conductor experiences a force and we are telling you that it's towards right and due to that the coil abcd will have a anti clockwise rotation so it will start rotating like a swing so this experiment shows the it demonstrates the presence of the force on a current carrying conductor placed perpendicularly to a magnetic field the the this is called motor effect motor effect means if you have a current carrying conductor and you placed it in perpendicularly in a magnetic field the field uh, the conductor will experience a force so this experiment shows that force i hope that is clear to you okay so um, in the previous uh, in my previous slide i told you that the bc is experiencing a force in the right direction why not in the left direction how come i know that uh, the force the direction of the force is towards right how come i will know that the direction of the force is to the left in this case it's towards the right but how how come i know 
So for that purpose, we have Fleming's left hand rule. Fleming's left hand rule is very simple. You see, you take your left hand. For example, my dear students, this is my left hand. And this is the thumb, thumb of my left hand. This is called the index finger. And this is called the middle finger. Thumb, index finger, middle finger. Take a marker and write on this thumb F. Right here, F. And here, write M. And here, write C. F, M, C. Force, magnetic field, current. Direction of the force, direction of the magnetic field, and direction of the conventional current. You will stretch these three fingers, thumb, index finger, middle finger, F, M, C. You will stretch them in such a way that they are perpendicular to each other. You can see that. I have stretched my finger. You have to actually do it. F, M, C. F, thumb is F. Index finger is M. And the middle finger is C. F, M, C. So if you will stretch the fingers of your left hand in such a way that the thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger, they are perpendicular to each other, like I have done. They, sh they should be perpendicular to each other. They all are perpendicular to each other. The thumb is representing the direction of the force. The index finger is representing the, uh, you know, direction of the FMC, magnetic field, and the middle finger is representing the direction of the current, conventional current, I'm saying. So FMC, remember this code, FMC. This is called the left-hand rule. And by applying this left-hand rule, we are able to tell that the conductor, current carrying conductor, placed in a magnetic field, Field will experience a force. And what will be the direction of that force? We can tell by applying the left hand rule. Uh, F M C. Thumb is force. Forefinger is magnetic field. The second finger is current, conventional current. F M C. This is called the left and rule and whenever uh, problems about uh, or questions about uh, direction of the force comes you have to stretch your fingers of the left hand and by using this left hand rule you will be able to tell that in in which direction the force will be applied I hope that little bit uh, it's it's little bit clear to you. We will apply this and you will learn more. Okay, what is the Fleming's left hand rule? We can deduce the direction of the force acting on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field using Fleming's left hand rule. Point your thumb, forefinger, and second finger at right angles to one another like this you can see this you can see this they are perpendicular at right angles to each other point your forefinger in the direction of the magnetic field north to south and your second finger in the direction of the current your thumb then gives the direction of the motion of the wire that is the direction of the force. In fact, given any two of the directions, we can deduce the remaining. If you know the any two, we are talking about three things. We are talking about the force experienced by the conductor. We are talking about the direction of the magnetic field. And we are direct, talking about the direction of the conventional current. 
so in any di given diagram if you know two directions so you can predict the third one okay let's move to the next question here we have uh, another example here you can see we have a uh, 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 alum, aluminum foil and it's a conductor and here we have north pole here we have south pole and this aluminum wire is a uh, foil is uh, connected with the battery this is the positive terminal of the battery this is the negative terminal of the battery and from the positive terminal the conventional will current will come out and if this switch is closed the positive uh, the current will flow in this direction and from here it will go back to the negative terminal so we know the direction of the current so we can apply the left hand rule and we can find what will be the direction of the force in this aluminum foil so stretch the your left hand fingers so thumb forefinger and the second finger f m c so the magnetic field is going in that direction and please try this yourself uh, my this uh, i call it the index finger also and this is the fourth finger this is a m magnetic field from north to south and the current is coming towards me and my thumb is pointing upward it means this aluminum foil will experience a force in upward direction so you see if i know the direction of the current in the aluminum foil if i know the direction of the magnetic field i can predict by using the fleming's left hand rule the direction of the force my thumb is pointing upward if my thumb is pointing upward it means that this aluminum foil will experience a force in the upward direction so that's why you can see in this aluminum foil we have a little band in the upward direction which shows that it has experienced a force in the upward direction and you see here we are able to uh, predict that in which direction this current carrying conductor will experience a force and this current carrying conductor is placed perpendicular to the magnetic field so by using the fleming's left hand rule we are able to predict the direction of the force in this aluminum foil i hope that is clear to you let's move to the next okay so for example here again we have uh, another example so here you have a magnetic field the magnetic field is going from north to south so this is the direction of the magnetic field here we have a conductor which is placed perpendicular to the magnetic field and you see the conventional current is flowing towards towards us and if i apply the left hand rule so take your left hand and take these three fingers stretch them in such a way they are perpendicular to each other you can see that they are perpendicular to each other stretch them in this way so f m c so you see the magnetic field is from north to south the current is coming towards me my thumb is pointing upward it means that the conductor will experience a force in the upward direction so by applying the fleming's left hand rule i am i am able to predict that in which direction the force will be exerted on the conductor the current carrying conductor this is called uh, the force that's the, the force which is and uh, the force experienced this is called the motor effect and the direction of the force i can predict by fleming's left hand rule i hope that is clear to you okay here another example here you can see we have a horse shoe shaped uh, um a magnet 
And here we have the north pole of the horseshoe magnet. And here is the south pole. So the magnetic field is from north to south, from north to south. So with these pink, uh, I think it's pink color. I don't know. If this is pink color, I think. It's from north to south. So the magnetic lines are from north to south. Magnetic field lines are from north to south. You can see them. And the conventional current is coming from here and it's going in this direction. So the conventional current is coming towards me or towards you. So we are talking about this conductor, okay? This uh, sky blue, I don't know which color this is. And this conductor, in this conductor, the current is flowing towards me. So we will see or you will observe that here it will experience a force in the upward direction. I can use the left hand rule to predict this. You see, if stretch your fingers of the left hand and F M C. Okay, magnetic field is from north to south. The current is coming towards me. My thumb is pointing upward. So this uh, conductor will experience a force in the upward direction. Okay, so this is called motor effect and this is uh, by Fleming's left hand rule. We are uh, able to predict the direction in which the force will be experienced by the uh, conductor uh, placed perpendicular to, perpendicularly to the magnetic field. Okay, so um, if the current is flowing in the direction which is shown here, the force experienced will be in the upper direction. For example, if you reverse the direction of the current, the north-south is still the same, the direction of the magnetic field is still the same, but you reverse the direction of the current. I mean, the current is flowing right now towards me, in this conductor, from here it's coming and it's coming towards me and then going this direction. So here, the current is coming towards me. For example, if you reverse the direction of the current, what will happen? If you reverse the direction of the current, the current will flow in this direction. Now it will move away from me. So what will happen? The direction of the force will also reverse. If the force in the previous case was in upper direction, now the force experienced will be in the downward direction. You see, I can apply the left hand rule and show you that this will happen. So you take your left hand, stretch the fingers of your left hand, F, M, C, and the magnetic field is in this direction, from north to south, from left to right, the magnetic field direction, but the current is going away from me. So I have to twist my arm. I actually have to twist my arm. Don't be ashamed to do this. We have to do this in the physics. So the magnetic field is going from uh, right to left. The current is going away from me. So my thumb is pointing now downward. I have to twist my arm. You have to do this. So you see the thumb is pointing downward. It means that the force experienced by this conductor will be downward. So you see one thing, when the current is coming in this conductor, when the current is coming towards me, the direction of the force experienced is in the upward direction. When I reverse the direction of the, of the current, now the current starts flowing to away from me, okay? Then the direction of the force also reverses. The direction of the force uh, changes and it goes downward. Direction of the force is downward then. So see, when you reverse the direction of the current and you keep the other thing same, the direction of the motor effect will change. It will also reverse. Another thing you can do, for example, if the current is flowing in this towards me, in this coil, and here you have north pole, here you have south pole, the direction of the force is upward. Now don't change the direction of the current. Keep the current coming towards me. But now change the polarity of the 
horseshoe magnet. When I say the change the polarity of the horseshoe magnet, I mean change the north and the south of the magnet. So suppose if this is the north and this is the south, then the direction of the magnetic field will be from if this is the north and this is the south, then the direction of the magnetic field will change. Now the direction of the magnetic field will be towards left, from right to left. So, and the current is still same towards me. And then apply the left hand rule, see what happens. Uh, now the magnetic field, now I have to twist my arm. You see, this is my left hand. I have to twist my arm. Okay, so the magnetic field is going towards the left and the current is coming towards me. My thumb is pointing downward. I have to twist my arm. My thumb is pointing downward. That means that from this given situation, if you only reverse the polarity of the magnetic field, if you reverse the direction of the magnetic field, the direction of the force will also reverse. Okay? So when you reverse the direction of the current, only the current, the direction of the force will reverse. If you only reverse the direction of the magnetic field, the direction of the force will reverse. If you reverse both things together, then the force will remain in the same direction. But that will not be the case, uh, you know, in your syllabus. I hope that this is clear to you. Okay, now here uh, we have a diagram and that diagram is actually show you that why, why the motor effect takes place. Uh, this will explain or this will describe that why a force is experienced by a current carrying conductor placed perpendicularly to a magnetic field. Try to understand this uh, explanation. Suppose here we have a conductor and this conductor I have represented with a cross. And when I represent a conductor with a cross, it means that the current is going into the page. The current is going away from me. The current is going into the screen. The current is going into the plane. Okay. So if you have a conductor who is represented with a cross, the magnetic field, uh, which we call electromagnetic effect around the current carrying conductor, the magnetic field produced around this conductor will be in the, in the concentric, concentric circles and those concentric circles uh, they will be uh, anti-clockwise how do i know they are anti-clockwise you have learned in this chapter that applying the right hand grip rule uh, for a straight conductor you can predict what will be the direction of the magnetic field lines so if you have your right hand this is my right hand okay so if I hold the conductor in such a way that my thumb is pointing uh, in the direction of the current because the current is going into the screen. So my curls of my finger, they show me the direction of the magnetic field. So my curls, the finger of my curls, they are showing me anti, uh, sorry, clockwise. So the direction of the magnetic field lines will be clockwise. Okay, here I have a north pole and a south pole. And at the bottom I have north pole and at some height we have the south pole. So here the magnetic field lines are from north to south. So the magnetic field lines here will be from north to south. They will be going towards south, from north to south. When you put this conductor inside this magnetic field like here i have done here so what will happen you know i have placed this conductor 
inside this magnetic field and in this diagram i'm showing this here is that conductor placed inside the magnetic field of this north south you see what will happen the that conductor that conductor the current carrying conductor it has a magnetic field a clockwise magnetic field and the magnetic field of this these permanent magnets is going in upward direction so on this left side of the conductor the on the left side of this current carrying conductor you see the direction of the magnetic field lines due to the current carrying conductor and the direction of the magnetic field lines due to the permanent magnets they are in the same direction they are in upward direction so on this left side of the conductor the magnetic field lines of this permanent magnet and the magnetic field lines of this current carrying uh, conductor they both are in the upward direction but on the right side of the conductor you see the magnetic field lines of this permanent magnet they are going upward but the magnetic field lines of this current carrying conductor the magnetic fields around it <coughs> on the right side they are going downward so the magnetic field lines of this conductor they are going downward but the magnetic field lines of these permanent magnets they are going upward so here on the right side the magnetic field lines are in opposite direction so what the magnetic field lines they do not intersect each other we have learned this in our previous chapter we learned this the magnetic field lines they do not intersect each other so what happens here on the left side because the magnetic field lines due to both the sources they have the same direction so here the magnetic field lines because they are pointing in the same direction they are very close to each other and you know when the magnetic field lines are very close to each other the magnetic field is very strong so the magnetic field on the left side of this conductor is very strong but on the right side of the conductor because uh, the magnetic field lines due, due to both the sources the magnetic field lines of the current carrying conductor and the magnetic field lines of this permanent magnets they are in opposite direction and the magnetic lines do not intersect each other so what will happen they will try to avoid each other because they do not intersect so here the magnetic lines will have larger distance between each other so here the magnetic field will be weaker on the left side the magnetic field lines are very close to each other so on the left side of the conductor the magnetic field lines are very strong but on the right side the magnetic field lines are away from each other so here on the right side the magnetic field is weak due to this on this side the magnetic field is strong on this side the magnetic field is weak due to this the conductor moves from a from an area where the magnetic field is strong towards an area where the magnetic field is weak that's why we say that the conductor moves so this is the, the so the conductor experiences a force due to difference of the magnetic field strands on the left side and on the right side a force is experienced by the conductor <coughs> i hope that uh, you have understood this here again i am trying to another way of representing the same thing so here we have uh north pole and a south pole and we will have magnetic field lines which will be going from north to south and this time the magnetic field lines they are going from left to right from north to south you know so the magnetic field lines are horizontal 
and here i have a conductor and that conductor is represented with a cross and the cross means that the current is going into the page the current is going into the screen when the current is going into the screen the magnetic field around that conductor will be clockwise and i can tell this direction will be clockwise of the magnetic field by the right hand rule of the straight conductor if i hold the conductor in such a way that the thumb is in the direction of the current the curves of my right hand show the direction of the magnetic field line and when i look at them from here i know that they will be clockwise so these are two separate diagrams when you place this conductor inside this magnetic field so see let's see what happens so here i have placed this so on uh on this side on this side this upper side of the conductor the direction of the magnetic field lines and the direction of the magnetic field lines due to the permanent magnets and the direction of the magnetic field lines due to the current carrying conductor they have the same direction so they come close to each other but on the bottom side on this side of the conductor the direction of the magnetic field lines due to permanent magnet and the direction of the magnetic field lines due to that current carrying conductor they are in opposite direction so here they will try to remain away from each other so what will happen they will uh, there will be a larger distance here so it means the magnetic field here is strong because the magnetic lines are close and here the magnetic field lines are away from each other so the magnetic field will be here weaker so above the conductor the magnetic field is strong and below the conductor the magnetic field is weak due to this difference of magnetic field on the top and on the bottom of the conductor the conductor will experience a force in the downward direction this is the description that why the conduct current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field experiences a force why the motor effect takes place so let me apply the left hand rule on this situation so you know the current is going fmc the current is going into the page the magnetic field is towards uh, right my thumb is pointing downward so i have applied the left hand rule on this situation the current is going into the screen the magnetic field is going towards the right my thumb is pointing downward you see i have to little twist my arm don't be ashamed to do this many students don't try this because they think it looks funny but you have to try this to learn this so my thumb is pointing downward so it means it will experience a force in the downward direction let me go back to the previous uh, here hey see uh, i let me apply the left hand rule on this situation on this situation i mean the current is going into the page uh, with your fmc sorry the current this this finger represents current so the current is going into the page the magnetic field is going upward from north to south it is going upward the current is going into the page my thumb is pointing towards the right of the screen so the this conductor will experience a force towards the right side of the screen towards the right of the so you see by applying the fleming's left hand rule we are able to predict that in which direction the force will be experienced by the current conductor in the magnetic field i hope that you have understood it okay here another example you see here we have a north pole we have a south pole the magnetic field the direction will be towards the right the from north to south here you see we have shown the magnetic field lines of the permanent magnet they are going from north to south 
Here we have shown a conductor. And you know the conductor is represented with a dot. And when the conductor is represented with a dot, it means that the current is coming out of the page. The current is coming out of the screen. The current is coming towards me out of this plane. So if I apply the right hand rule for the straight conductor, the current is coming towards me. The curves of my fingers show the direction of the magnetic field. So the, if I look from here, the curves of my fingers tell me that the direction of the magnetic field will be anti-clockwise. See here, north-south pole of a permanent magnet, the, current, the magnetic field lines, they are towards the right. And here we have a conductor which is represented with dot, which means that the current is coming out of the page and the magnetic field lines around it is in anti-clockwise direction. So when I place this conductor, when I place this conductor inside this magnetic field, here is that situation. I place this conductor inside that magnetic field. So see what will happen. At the top, on the top side of the conductor, above the conductor, the direction of the magnetic field lines due to the conductor and the magnetic field lines of this north and south above the conductor, they are in opposite direction. So they will avoid each other. And below the conductor, the direction of the magnetic field lines due to the current carrying conductor and the magnetic field lines of the north and the south permanent magnet, they have the same direction. So you see, below this conductor, the magnetic field lines will be very close to each other. And above this conductor, the magnetic field lines will be away from each other. So the below the conductor, the magnetic field line, the magnetic field strength will be stronger. But above the conductor, the magnetic field will be weaker due to this difference of magnetic field below the conductor and above the conductor. The magnetic field is stronger below the conductor. The magnetic field is weaker above the conductor. So due to this difference of magnetic field, a force is experienced by that conductor in the upward direction. So this is the description that why the motor effect will take place. Now I can apply the left hand rule on this situation so and predict what will be the direction of the motor effect. What will be the direction of the force experienced by this current carrying conductor placed in this magnetic field. So let's apply the left hand rule. Left hand rule, you take your left hand, stretch your fingers, these three fingers, thumb, forefinger, second finger, and uh, they are perpendicular to each other, mutually perpendicular to each other. F, M, C, force, magnetic field, conventional current. Okay, let's apply. The magnetic field is from north to south. The current is coming towards me. It is coming out of the screen. Oh, my thumb is pointing towards the top of the screen towards the top of the page or it is pointing in upward direction, it means that the force experience will be in the upward direction. See, by applying the left-hand rule, the Fleming's left-hand rule, I am able to tell that in which direction the motor effect, the force of the motor effect will be experienced by a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field. I hope that you have understood this. Okay, now uh, we come to uh, a new situation. For example, if you have uh, two conductors and in both the conductors, they are, um, the conductors are parallel to each other like this. They are parallel to each other. And one interesting observation you will see 
that if the direction of the current in both the conductors is same, if the direction of the current in both the conductors, wire number one and the second wire, the direction of the current is same, when you will start the current flowing through them, they will attract each other. They will attract. So if you have two parallel conductors, two conductors parallel to each other, and the direction of the current flowing through them is same, for example, in, in both of them, the current is going in upward direction, or in both of them, the current is going in downward direction. If in both the conductors, which are parallel to each other, the direction of the current is same in both the conductors, they will experience a force of attraction. So what will happen as the current will start flowing through that, they will attract. They will attract each other. Another observation. If you have two conductors parallel to each other and the direction of the current in them is opposite to each other. For example, in one conductor, the current is going upward and in the other, the current is going downward. If you have two parallel conductors and they are parallel to each other like these, my arms, and the current flowing through them have opposite direction. So what will happen when the current will start flowing? They will repel each other. They will repel each other, okay? So if you have two parallel conductors and the direction of the current in them is same, they will attract, they will experience a force of attraction. And if you have two parallel conductors and the direction of the current in them is opposite to each other, and then they will experience a force of repulsion. Okay. Here you see, we have a very good example. Here we have two parallel conductors and they are held by these, uh, holders and they are connected with the battery and here in these two parallel conductors the direction of the current is opposite in one of the conductors you can see here the current is going upward in the other conductor the current is going downward so here you have two parallel conductors and in them the direction of the magnetic uh, direction of the current sorry is different from each other so what will you will observe they will repel each other. When the current will start flowing, the coils will move away from each other. So here you can see that the coils have repelled each other. Okay, in this diagram, so here I have represented uh, a conductor with a dot. And when I represent a conductor with a dot, it means that the cur current is going, coming out of this page. And Parallel to it, I have put another conductor, like these two conductors which are parallel to each other. I put another conductor here, but the direction of the current in this conductor is into the page. So you see, this and this conductor, they are parallel to each other. And in both of them, the current flowing has opposite direction. In this, the current is coming out of the page. And in this, the current is coming, going, sorry, into the page. So the direction of the current in both the parallel conductors is opposite to each other. Now, due to this conductor, because the current is coming out, I can apply the right-hand rule for the, uh, for the straight conductor. And I know from the curves of my finger, my thumb is in the direction of the current. And the curves of my finger are telling me that the direction of the magnetic field will be anti-clockwise. You can see here it is anti-clockwise. And here, because the current is going into the screen, by applying the right-hand rule for the, uh, for the straight conductor, when I look the curves of my finger from here, I know that the magnetic field will be clockwise. So the magnetic field around this first conductor is anti-clockwise and the magnetic field around this second conductor is clockwise. So when you put them close to each other, what happens? In the middle, in the middle, you know, you know, in the middle, 
the direction of the magnetic lines due to the conductor one and due to the conductor two they both magnetic lines have the same direction but so it means in the middle the magnetic field will become uh, very strong more stronger than the magnetic line on this side and the magnetic uh, strength on this side so in the middle the magnetic field lines are very close to each other and the in the middle the magnetic field is very strong on the sides on this side and on this side the magnetic field is weak so due to this difference of the magnetic field what happens this conductor will feel experience in this direction from stronger magnetic field it will move to a weaker magnetic field this conductor here the magnetic field is stronger and on this side the magnetic field is weaker relatively weaker so it will this conductor this conductor will move from a stronger magnetic field to a weaker magnetic field so this magnet this conductor will move to the left this conductor will move to the right so they are showing kind of uh, force of repulsion <clears throat> i hope that you have understood this okay here we have another example of two parallel conductors you know here um, these are again two parallel conductors they are held by these holders and they are connected with the battery but this time the direction of the current in both the conductors is same in this uh, conductor the current is going downward in this conductor the current is going downward so we have two parallel conductors and in these parallel conductors uh, the direction of the current is same in both the conductors the current is going downward so when you will when you will switch on the current you will observe that the conductors they will attract each other so as in this diagram you can see in the middle portion they have attracted each other so let's see why this happens okay uh, for example here i have shown two conductors both the conductors are represented with a cross with a cross means in this conductor the current is coming uh, sorry is going into the page in this conductor the current is going into the page so both the conductors are parallel to each other and they both have the same direction of the current here the direction of the current is into the page into the screen into the plane so apply the right hand rule so my thumb is in the direction of the current the curves of my finger telling me the direction of the magnetic field will be clockwise so this will have clockwise and this will also have clockwise so you see in the middle note one thing that the magnetic lines are opposite to each other so when you put these conductors close to each other and you start flowing current in them so what happens in the middle because the magnetic field lines due to conductor a and the magnetic field lines due to conductor b they are opposite to each other so what happen in the middle there is no magnetic field so in the sides relatively the magnetic field will be stronger in the middle there will be no magnetic field and due to this what will happen this conductor will move this conductor one will move from stronger magnetic field to weaker magnetic field and so this will try to move to the uh, right and this conductor number 2 here the magnetic field is stronger relatively here the magnetic field is weaker so this conductor will also move from stronger magnetic field towards weaker magnetic field so it will move towards the left so this conductor will move to the right this conductor will move to the left so you will experience or you will observe a force of attraction between them you see here that the magnetic field lines the magnetic field lines of this conductor they were uh, clockwise but they do not come here inside 
instead they go and hug the other conductor so we by joke we say that both the conductors they are hugging each other so how you see these magnetic lines they go not go inside here but they go and around the second conductor and they come back so you see especially this diagram this diagram comes in paper so don't forget it when this diagram is uh, shown it means attraction it means both the conductors have the current in the same direction either they have the current in as the in this example the current is uh, into the page but the direction of the current is same in both the conductors or it could in both of them it could be out of the page then the then the conductor will be represented with a dot i hope that you have understood this diagram let's move to the next point okay here this diagram is very important this diagram comes in theory paper this diagram also comes in uh, your mcq paper also so for example here we have shown uh, two wires with crosses this is exactly the previous diagram and here the conductor is presented with a cross which means the current is going into the page this conductor number 1 magnetic field around it will be clockwise this conductor number 2 the magnetic field around it will be also clockwise but you know in the middle the magnetic field lines due to conductor 1 and the magnetic field lines conduct due to conductor 2 they will be opposite to each other so what will happen the magnetic lines will not come in but they will go all around the second conductor and then come back so by joke we say that these magnetic lines are hugging or uh, taking the second conductor in its lap so this conductor will experience a force towards the left the conductor number 1 will experience a force towards the uh, right side this happens because you know in the middle the magnetic field has become weaker on the sides on this side and on this side the magnetic field is relatively stronger so this conductor will move from a stronger magnetic field towards a weaker magnetic field and this conductor will also move from a region or area where the magnetic field is strong towards an area where the magnetic field is weak so both will come close to each other so if you have two parallel conductors and the direction of the current flowing through them is same they will attract each other if you have two parallel conductors and the direction of the current in them is opposite to each other then they will repel each other and don't forget uh, that uh, don't forget this diagram okay very important diagram so here you see again we have represented two conductors and the both the conductors are represented with dots and when i represent them with dots you know it means that the uh, current is coming out of the page so the current is coming out of the screen it is coming towards me it is coming out of the page it is coming out of the plane so i can predict that this conductor number 1 what will be the direction of the magnetic field lines around it the current is coming out of the page apply the right hand rule and my thumb is direction of the current the curves of my finger when i see from here they are telling me that the direction of the magnetic field will be anti clockwise so the magnetic field around this conductor number 1 will be anti clockwise direction of the magnetic field around this conductor number 2 will be also anti clockwise so in the middle you see the magnetic field lines due to conductor 1 and the magnetic field lines due to conductor 2 they have the opposite direction so here a gap is created where the magnetic field lines are are, are very weak magnetic field is very weak on the sides the magnetic field is relatively stronger so what happened this conductor 1 experience a force towards the right this conductor number 2 experience a force towards the left so overall it seems that both the conductors are attracting each other so the magnetic lines which go around this they do not enter here but they overlap or they take and hug the sec first 
conductor. This diagram is very important. This comes in the MCQ's papers. I hope that you have understood this. So here again, we are trying to show you, this is a very important concept. You see, we are trying to do it again and again. So, uh, so that is very clear to you. Here you see, I have represented two parallel conductors. Both are represented with a dot. And dot means the current is coming out of the page. So these are two parallel conductors and the direction of the current in both of them is out of the page. It is coming out of the paper. So by the right hand rule, you can tell the direction of the magnetic field around this conductor, conductor number one. And you can also predict the direction of the magnetic field lines around conductor number two. Because the current is coming out of the page, if I apply the right hand rule, I know the direction of the magnetic field, uh, it should be, uh, the direction of the magnetic field should be, I mean, uh, anti-clockwise. And the direction of the magnetic field here, should be anti-clockwise okay so the so in the middle the direction of the magnetic field lines will be opposite to each other so here there will be no magnetic field line so the magnetic field lines of this they will over uh, they will hug the second conductor and they will be like this so we will have attraction so in this diagram there is a mistake this should have be, this should be represented with the you know the magnetic field the direction which he showed he should have not shown it with a dot he should have shown it with a cross because the magnetic field lines are telling me that direction is into the page it should be not dot here so not dot here it should be a cross here okay so um, mark this mistake. It should be a cross here. Okay. It should not be a dot. So if the direction of the uh, current is same, so they will attract each other. Here, you know, uh, the current is, uh, this should be a dot and this should be a cross. Okay. The terminology which we use. Uh, this should be here should we have a we should have a dot dot means that the current is coming outward Okay, so the direction of the magnetic field will be Anti-clockwise and here it is represented with a it should be represented with a cross the current is going into the page and It should be clockwise So in the center, you know the magnetic field lines have the same direction so when the magnetic field lines have the same direction here, the magnetic field lines due to both of these conductors, they have the same direction here in the middle. So here the magnetic field will become very strong. And on the sides, the magnetic field is relatively weaker. So from stronger magnetic field towards the weaker magnetic field, this conductor will move. This conductor will move from stronger magnetic field towards the weaker magnetic field. So they will move away from each other. So it will be like repulsion, okay? So mark one difference, okay? In your book, uh, this should be a cross, this should be a cross, this should be a dot, and this should be a cross, okay? So in this diagram, they have uh, reversed the terminology. But we, when we represent a conductor with a cross, it means that the current is going into the page. And when we represent a, a conductor with a dot, it means that the current is coming out of the page. Okay? Otherwise, there is no mistake. It's good. I hope that it's, it's clear to you. Okay. Now, we have uh, a charged particle. And that charged particle is, is moving. And, for example, we have a positive ion some atom or some molecule which has positive ion and it's moving in towards the 
towards the right side of the screen and it happens to pass through this magnetic field and you know the magnetic field is represented with the crosses and when i represent the magnetic field with the crosses it means that the magnetic field is going into the screen the magnetic field is going into the paper the direction of the magnetic field is into the paper so you see when this positive ion will come in this magnetic field it will experience motor effect and this charge particle will be deflected either it will be deflected upward or it will be deflected downward we can predict that direction uh, by the applying the left hand rule so for example uh the left hand rule fmc magnetic field is into the m magnetic field is into the screen into the page the positive charge this is the natural current is going towards the left my thumb is pointing upward so what will happen when this positive charge will come in this field it will be deflected in the upward direction so when it will enter in this magnetic field it will be deflected it will not go straight it will be deflected in the upward direction so by applying the left hand rule i am able to tell in which direction this charged particle this positively charged particle will be deflected and remember this left hand rule is based on the positive charges okay it's about the conventional current okay here you have we have a positively charged particle it is was projected here we have a magnetic field the magnetic field was represented with the crosses when i represent the magnetic field with the crosses it means that the magnetic field is into the page so apply the left hand rule again f m c magnetic field is into the page the positive charge or conventional current is going towards the right of the screen the thumb of my left hand is pointing in upward direction it means that this positive charge when it will enter this magnetic field it will be bended in the upward direction and it has bended in the upward direction so by using fleming's left hand rule you see i am able to tell that a positively charged particle how this will be deflected in a magnetic field i hope that you have understood okay so here we have another positive charged particle and you see here it is entering into a magnetic field and the magnetic field is represented with dots when i represent the magnetic field with dots it means that the magnetic field is coming out of this paper the magnetic field is coming out of this screen the magnetic field is coming towards me out of this plane so by applying the fleming's left hand rule i can predict that in which direction the magnet the charge particle will deflect okay so f m c stretch the fingers of your left hand f m c f m c force magnetic field and current so the current is coming f m c the magnetic field is out of the page i have to twist my arm you can see the magnetic field is coming out of the page towards my face and the charge positive charge particle is going towards the right my thumb is pointing downward it means it will be deflected you see here we have to twist our arm don't be ashamed to do this okay if i was having a face to face class with you i will ask everybody to do this i will ask one by one each student to come on the on on the white board and stretch his arm the left arm because you have to practice this because here you see here fmc the magnetic field was coming out of the page so i have to twist it the current was going towards the uh, 
uh, right side then my thumb is pointing towards bottom of the paper so i have to twist my arm so you have to do this to learn this okay so this by by the fleming's left hand rule i am able to tell in which direction this is the post, positive charge particle will deflect so it will deflect towards the bottom of the page it will deflect in this manner i hope that is clear to you okay again here you can see we have uh, electrons electrons are not positive charges electrons are negative and i told you this uh, left hand rule is for positive charges it is for conventional current it is not for the electron current it is not for the negative charge but we will uh, we will try to find the direction by using the left hand okay so here we have electrons a beam of electrons coming into this magnetic field and you know this magnetic field is represented with the crosses when i represent the magnetic field with the crosses it means the magnetic field is into the page it is going into the screen magnetic field is into the page into the plane into the screen and the beam of electron is coming towards right from left to right if the beam of electron is coming from left to right then the direction of the conventional current will be from right to left when you apply the left hand rule you follow the conventional current so if the electrons are going to from left to right then the direction of the conventional current will be towards from right to left opposite to the motion of the electrons so apply apply the left hand rule but in the left hand rule we always take the conventional current remember that okay the fmc fmc force magnetic field current so the magnetic field is into the screen the conventional the electron flow is towards the right but the conventional current is towards left you see i have to twist my arm magnetic field is going into the page the conventional current is towards the left my thumb is pointing towards the bottom so these electrons they will bend towards the bottom of this page i hope that you have understood okay here another example on electrons we have negatively charged particles and they are going from left to right so they are moving from left to right but you know uh, when i apply the left hand rule i don't use the electron flow i use the conventional current so if the electrons are going from left to right then the conventional current will be from right to left so when you apply the left hand rule the for current you use the direction of the conventional current not the electron flow okay now here the magnetic field is represented with the crosses and uh, okay magnetic field is into the page conventional current is towards the from right to left my thumb is pointing towards the bottom so the electron beam will be deflected towards the bottom of the bottom of the page okay so here we come to a new concept here in this diagram you see here i have a rectangular coil the name of the rectangular coil is a b c d and this is a axle this is a axle and here i have two permanent magnets try to understand the story so here i have a, a coil which is in the form of a rectangle and here the current is coming in 
from A to B, from B to C, from C to D, and goes back. So I am interested in the two sides of this coil. I am interested in the side uh, AB, and I am interested in the side CD. And if you look at the side AB, only consider the side A. Side AB is a current carrying conductor. Side CD is also a current carrying conductor. But the important thing about the AB and the CD is they are current carrying conductor which are perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field here. You know, here you have the North Pole, a permanent magnet, North Pole. Here you have a South Pole. So you have two permanent magnets here. So we have magnetic field here. And those magnetic field lines are going from north to south, you know, from north to south. They are kind of horizontal lines. They are going from north to south. They are going from north to south. So they are horizontal. So they are going from north to south. The magnetic field lines are going from north to south. And here we have a rectangular coil. And the name of the rectangular coil is A, B, C, D. The current is entering from here, flowing from A to B, from B to C, from C to D, and goes back. And you know, I am interested in the side AB. And I am interested in the side CD. Why I am interested in the side AB? Because it's a current carrying conductor which is perpendicular to the magnetic field. I am interested in the CD side because the CD is a current carrying conductor perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. I'm not interested in the BC. I'm not interested in the AD. Just forget that. Okay? Because they are parallel to the magnetic field line. So we are not interested. In we are basically interested in the AB and we are interested in the CD. Okay. Now look at the AB. AB is a current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field. If I apply the left hand rule, I can predict the direction of the motor effect. I can predict what will be the direction of the force experienced by this current carrying conductor. <coughs> For example, use your left hand rule. The current is flowing from A to B. The current is flowing from A to B. It's going downward. The magnetic field is from north to south. The current is going downward. My thumb is pointing towards me. So you see, it will experience a force towards me. Okay? You can see here. Now, consider the CD side. In the CD side, the magnetic field is from north to south. The current is going upward. The current is going upward. My thumb is pointing, pointing away from me. So on the side CD, the force will be away from me. So on the AB, the, the force experienced, the motor effect, is towards me. And on the CD, the force experienced is away from me. I can tell these directions of forces by the right hand, the left, Fleming's left hand rule, sorry, Fleming's left hand rule. So here we have taken the top view of this screen. Top view, this top view of this whole thing. So this AB, this is the, the side AB from the top view. This is the AB side. So it's, a, it's experiencing a force like this. And this CD thing is experiencing a force in that direction. And this coil is axled here. So it's like a pivot. So around it, the coil can rotate. Now what will happen? You have a body which is pivoted in the center. It has axle in the center. And 
on its two ends two forces are applied the both these forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction and they have different line of action so what will happen due to this these two forces are called coupled in your physics uh, you might have studied it or you might not have studied it but this is called a couple when two forces in the opposite direction parallel to each other having different lines of action acts on a body so what happens that that body starts rotating that body starts rotating for example i can give you example of a, a couple a force which is a couple for example if you have a steering wheel of your car if you have steering wheel of your car and with one hand you apply downward force and with the other hand other hand you apply upward force so you see these are the two forces which are equal in magnitude opposite in direction have different lines of action and they are acting on a body which is pivoted in the center so due to this couple what happened the body starts rotating so this coil will start rotating so this coil will start rotating clockwise this is called the turning effect on a current carrying coil in a magnetic field so try to understand this story again here we have a coil the name of the coil is a b c d and here we have two permanent magnets north pole south pole so the magnetic lines are going from north to south we introduce current in the coil so in the side ab the current is going downward the current is coming from b to c from c to d and then going back i am interested in the ab side and the cd side why i am interested because ab is a current, a current carrying conductor which is perpendicular to the magnetic field so it will have motor effect i am interested in the cd because it's a current carrying conductor which is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines so it will experience a motor effect so you see this coil has axle so around this axle this coil can rotate in clockwise anti clockwise manner so what happens when i apply the left hand rule on the ab side i came to know that it will experience a force in this direction when i apply the left hand rule on the cd side of the coil i came to know that it will experience a force in that direction so you see these two forces they are acting on this coil and they have the same magnitude but they have in the uh, they have the opposite direction and they have different lines of action and this coil has an axle in the center so what will happen they will act as a couple and they will rotate the coil in the clockwise manner so the coil which is like this it will start rotating in a clockwise manner you see so you see it's a very interesting thing you see we have a magnetic field we have electricity and when you provided the electricity to the coil you are able to produce self you are able to rotate that coil so with the help of the electricity with the help of the magnetic field we can create motion this is a very interesting thing it has changed the world okay so another uh, way of representing uh, these things uh, here in this diagram you can see we have uh, two permanent magnets in the first diagram you can see here we have shown we have two permanent magnets north pole south pole so this north pole and the south pole they have the magnetic field in them the magnetic field is from north to south the magnetic field is going from north to south north to south here you have north pole here you have the south pole so the magnetic lines are moving from the north to south from north to south magnetic fields and here we have a coil and the name of the coil is a b c d the name of the coil is a b c d and this coil has an axle 
so this is an axle around this axle this coil is mounted and that on that axle so this coil rotates it can rotate clockwise it can rotate anti clockwise so you see this clock uh, this coil sorry is right now in a horizontal position and when you introduce the conventional current for example you introduce the conventional current and it's flowing from a to b from b to c from c to d and back you see i am interested in the two sides of the coil the side a b and i am interested in the side uh, of the coil c d the side c d of the coil i am interested in so the two sides are of my interest a b side and the c d side and why i am only interested in these two sides why not in the b c and the a d because a b side is a current carrying conductor which is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines why i am interested in the c d side because the c d is a current carrying conductor perpendicular to the magnetic field lines you see the conventional current is flowing from a to b so, so let's talk about the ab side in the ab side the current is flowing from a to b so if you apply the left hand rule and i know the direction of the magnetic field lines i know the direction of the current in the ab so by using the fleming's left hand rule i can tell you the direction of the force experienced by this conductor so let's apply the left hand rule Hmm. F M C, left hand rule. This is my left hand. Magnetic field is from north to south. The current is going from A to B. It is going away from me. My thumb is pointing downward. It means that the side A B will uh, will experience a force in the downward direction. You have to apply this left hand rule by yourself. don't be ashamed don't feel hesitant uh, apply this twist your arm stretch your finger left hand and try to learn this try to apply this you see the fmc magnetic field is going in this way towards the right the current is going away from me my thumb is pointing downward it means that the ab will experience a force downward here by this arrow he has he has shown that thing okay now consider the cd the side cd of the coil the current is coming from c to d and the magnetic field is from north to south so apply the left hand rule okay fmc 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 hmm current is coming towards me cd from c to d magnetic field is from north to south my thumb is pointing upward it means that on the cd side the force experienced will be in the upward direction okay apply it yourself when you will apply this yourself then you will actually learn this okay so you see by applying the left hand rule on the ab side i am able to tell that this ab the ab will experience a force in the downward direction and by applying the left hand rule on the cd side i am able to tell that the direction of the force experienced by the cd side will be in the upward direction so ab is experiencing a force in the downward direction and the cd is experiencing a force in the upward direction you see this is a coil coil is a body and on one side of the coil the force is downward and on the opposite side of the coil the force is in the upward direction so these two forces and uh, the coil is also uh, has an axle so these two forces act as a couple and what these two forces will do they will uh, rotate the coil in the clockwise manner what these will do they will rotate the coil in the clockwise manner you see uh, i can explain it again 
See here we have a North Pole, here we have a South Pole. Here I have a coil, its name is A, B, C, D. And the current is coming from A, going to B, from B to C, from C to D, and then going back. We are only concentrating on AB and the CD. AB, I applied the left hand rule and I came to know that the force experienced by this side will be in the downward direction and the force experienced by this side will be in the upward direction. So these two forces act as a couple and they will rotate this coil in a clockwise manner. So this coil, which was in the horizontal position, it will start rotating in the clockwise. Okay. So when I look from here, it's clockwise. See, they will start rotating in the clockwise. Okay. So here in this diagram, he has shown the AB and the the CD, okay? The AB and the CD. So here in the AB, the this is representing the AB. The current is going uh, away. So when the current is going away, the direction of the magnetic field lines will be uh, clockwise. And here, this represents the CD, the current is coming towards me. The direction of the magnetic field around it will be uh, anti-clockwise. So you can see, if you consider this AB thing, on the top, the magnetic field lies due to this conductor and the magnetic field lies due to this north-south. They have the same direction. So here, above this conductor, the magnetic field will be very strong. And below this conductor, the magnetic field will be weak. So this conductor will move from strong magnetic field towards weaker magnetic field. So it will experience a force in downward direction. So this CD thing, if you look at above the, this conductor, the magnetic field here, magnetic field lines due to this conductor, and the magnetic field line due to this north and south, they have the opposite direction. But in the bottom, uh, they have the same direction. So below this conductor, the magnetic field will become stronger. And above this conductor, the magnetic field will become weaker. So this conductor will move from stronger magnetic field towards weaker magnetic field. So what will happen, it will experience a force in the upward direction. So the AB side, it will experience a force in the downward direction. And this uh, CD side, it will experience a force in the upward direction. So what will happen uh, if these are the two sides of the AB and the CD. So the AB will go down and the CD will go. So this coil will rotate and this coil will rotate in the clockwise manner okay so i hope it's, it's, it's getting a little complicated but i hope that uh, you if you are learning it step by step then you are able to uh, imagine that if you have a coil it, it is on some axle and if you uh, introduce current in that coil and there are magnetic poles around that coil and that coil will experience forces on its sides and that coil will start rotating. You see, with the help of the electricity and the magnetic field, we are able to produce motion. And that is the basis for the motor. Uh, you know, we have uh, motors in our homes, we have motors in our toys, we have motors in the... Uh, uh, helicopters, we have motors everywhere. Your grinder has a motor, pan has a motor. So all those, what does motor do? It converts the electric energy into mechanical energy. Electric energy is converted into mechanical energy, you know, with the help of magnetic field and with the help of electric field or electricity, we are able to produce motion. 
that's the function of a motor and this is the basis of a motor let's move ji so here again we have a coil and in this coil you know uh, we have uh, two poles permanent magnets here we have two permanent magnets this is a north pole this is the south pole we have two permanent magnets actually here and this is the north and this is the south so here the magnetic field lines are from north to south so they are going from north to south from right to left they are going they are horizontal and they are going from north to south so here we have a coil and that coil is on some kind of axle and from this end of the coil the current conventional current is introduced and from this side of the coil the current is coming out okay so now what you will observe this side the right side of the coil it will experience a force in the downward direction and this left side of the coil this side of the coil it will experience a force in the upward direction and what will happen this will, this coil will start rotating in a clockwise manner how let's 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 go into detail how you see this right side of the coil is a current carrying conductor it's a current carrying conductor and this current carrying conductor is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines this current carrying conductor is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines so what will happen by applying the fleming's left hand rule i can tell you the direction of the force experienced by this side so apply the left hand rule let's apply the left hand rule on this right side the current is coming towards me uh, current is coming towards me the magnetic field is from north to south i have twisted my arm my thumb is pointing downward you see the current is coming towards me in the right side of this coil the current is coming towards me the magnetic field is from north to south my thumb is pointing downward it means that on this side the direction of the motor effect will be downward okay now let's consider this right this left side of the coil the current is going in that direction the magnetic field is going from north to south apply the left hand rule so uh, the current fmg the current is going you see here i am trying to apply the left hand rule and you can see uh, okay so the magnetic field is going in this direction and the current is going away from me my thumb is pointing upward it means that the the current is going in that direction magnetic field is going in that direction the force from the left hand rule i can predict is going upward direction so these two forces they are opposite in direction equal in magnitude have different line of actions and they are acting on the same body one is on the on the right right side and one is on the left side so they will be acting like a couple so they will rotate this so they will produce the turning effect okay so what happen this coil will start rotating it will start in the clockwise manner i hope that this uh, concept is clear to you and this is the basis for the motor okay again uh, this is the this is the description that why those forces are acting so here the current is coming uh, going into the if the current is going into the suppose here if in this side of the coil the current is going into the page the direction of the magnetic field around it will be uh, clockwise and above this conductor you know 
the direction of the permanent mag magnetic field lines of the permanent magnet and the direction of the magnetic field due to this conductor above this conductor they have the same direction and below they are opposite to each other so above this conductor the magnetic field will be stronger and below this conductor the magnetic field will be weaker so this conductor will experience a force in the downward direction because the conductor will move from a stronger magnetic field towards a weaker magnetic field so if you talk about this conductor the current is coming out of the page and the magnetic field line around it according to the right hand rule is uh, anti clockwise and above this conductor you see the direction of the magnetic field lines due to the conductor and the direction of the magnetic field lines due to the north and the south pole they are opposite to each other so what will happen above this conductor the magnetic field line the magnetic field lines are opposite so they here the magnetic field will be weaker and below the conductor because the magnetic field lines due to the conductor and the magnetic field lines due to these permanent magnets they have the same direction below the conductor so here the magnetic field line the magnetic field below the conductor will be stronger and above the conductor the magnetic field will be weaker so this conductor will move from a stronger magnetic field towards the magnet uh, to the towards the weak magnetic field so what will happen it will experience a force in the upward direction so this side of the coil will experience a force in the downward direction and this side of the coil will experience a force in the upward direction so what will happen these two forces they will act as a couple and they will rotate the body and this is called the turning effect on a current carrying coil in a magnetic field okay okay so here we have a, a very a very basic diagram of a dc motor okay so in this diagram first we will learn that what are the what how this is constructed we will talk about or we will name or we will label some parts of this coil so it's a very very simplified diagram of a dc motor so here you know in the dc motor we have two permanent magnets there we have a north pole here we have a south pole so this is a one magnet this is another magnet north pole south south pole they are providing the magnetic field here the magnetic field is from north to south so these two are permanent magnets here we have a coil and the name of this coil is a b c d the name of this coil is a b c d okay and here you have a battery and this is the positive side of the battery and from here this is a carbon brush we call it carbon brush this is called split ring commutator this is called a split ring commutator this one is also a split ring commutator this is a carbon brush and here we have a battery connection here we have a switch and this is a rheostat a variable resistor by the help of this variable resistor we can increase its resistance we can decrease its resistance and by doing so we are able to control the amount of current flowing into this coil this coil is mounted on an axle so about this axle this coil can rotate it can rotate to clockwise it can rotate to anti clockwise so this ab the side ab is permanently in connection with this ring x and this side cd is permanently in connection with the ring y this y thing the when this coil will rotate when this coil will rotate these rings will also rotate okay so here we have a coil 
This is mounted on an axle where we have two prominent magnets. These are called split ring commutators. Here we have carbon brushes and we have a battery. We have a rheostate or variable resistor and we have here a switch. These carbon brushes, they are stationary. They don't move, they don't rotate. But these split ring commutators, this portion, the split, this split ring commutator is welded with the AB side and this split ring commutator is welded with the DC side. So as the coil will rotate, so this ring will rotate, okay? So uh, this is the basic uh, uh, structure of our DC motor. I hope that is clear to you. Okay, so uh, a rectangular wire coil ABCD is mounted on an axle represented by the dotted line PQ that allows it to rotate about the PQ. So he's talking about uh, ABCD. This is mounted on this axle PQ. So because this uh, rectangular coil is mounted on the PQ, so it can rotate about the PQ, either in the clockwise or in the anti-clockwise manner. Okay. The coil and the axle are positioned in between the poles of a permanent magnet. Okay, so we are, here we have two magnets. This not in the south, they are representing two permanent magnets. Okay. The ends of the coil A, B, C, D are connected to a split ring commutator X, Y. The commutator rotates with the coil. So you see, this is the split ring commutator. And this split ring commutator, here we have the splits, here we have the gaps. And uh, we will learn that what is the function of this gap. But this split ring commutator, this portion of the split ring commutator is permanently connected with the AB. And this side of the split ring commutator is permanently connected with the DC side. So when the coil will rotate if the ab is on the right side this ring will be on the right side if after rotation the ab is on the left side this portion of the split ring will be also on the left side you see so it is permanently moving while it's rotating the split ring is also rotating the carbon brushes are stationary okay two carbon brushes press lightly against the commutator two carbon brushes press lightly against the commutator so here you have two carbon brushes they are basically providing the connection between the stationary battery and the rotating coil and the split ring commutator so the split ring commutator will be rotating but these carbon brushes are stationary so they provide the electricity connection between the stationary battery and the rotating split ring commutator and the coil. Two carbon brushes pressed tightly against the commutator. Using Fleming's left hand rule, we know that the downward force acts on the wire section AB and an upward force on the wire section CD. The coil thus rotates anti clockwise about the PQ until it reaches a vertical position. Try to understand this. Now, let's apply. This is the positive terminal of the battery. So the current is coming from here to the carbon brush into this ring, this split ring, and it enters the coil. So from A to B, the current is flowing. From A to B, the current is flowing from A to B. AB is a current carrying conductor. AB is a current carrying conductor and it is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. So let's apply the left hand rule. Uh, magnetic field is going in this way. The magnetic field is going in this way. And the current is going from A to B, away from me. 
So my thumb is pointing downward. Here I have to twist my arm. Magnetic field is going from north to south. The current, conventional current is going from A to B. The thumb is pointing downward. So on the AB, a downward force will be acting here. Okay. Now let's talk about the CD side. And it's a current carrying conductor, which is placed perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. Let's apply the left hand rule on it. The CD side. The magnetic field is from north to south. Current is flowing from C to D towards me. C to D. My thumb is pointing upward. So on the CD, the force experienced will be in the upward direction. So on the AB, the force experienced is in the downward direction. But on the CD, the force experienced is in the upward direction. So what will happen? This coil, from, from where I am looking, this coil will rotate in the anti-clockwise manner. This coil right now is horizontal position. This coil right now uh, is in the horizontal position. So when the force on the AB side of the coil will be downward and the force on the CD side will be in the upward direction. So these two forces will be acting like a couple. So they will rotate this coil in an anti-clockwise manner. So this coil from the horizontal position, it will go to the vertical position. Because of the turning effect of the of the of this current carrying coil in the magnetic so what happens that this coil which was horizontal because on the cd the upward force is acting on the ab the force is acting downward so this coil will rotate in the anti clockwise manner and the coil will become vertical now understand one interesting The force which was acting on the CD, it was upward direction. And this is the axle of the coil. This force was able to produce a turning effect because the line of action of this force and there was some moment arm between the axle, the pivot and the point where the force was applied. So it produced turning effect. Same is the case with the AB. The force acting here was downward and the perpendicular distance between the perpendicular distance between the pivot and the line of action of that force, there was some distance. So that force produced a turning effect. That force produced an anti-clockwise turning effect. That of force also produced an anti-clockwise turning effect. So that coil rotated anti-clockwise. And it became vertical. When it becomes vertical, and if the force, sorry, when it becomes vertical, when it becomes vertical, if the current direction remain the same. It means that if in the CD side, the current is flowing from C to D. When the coil was horizontal, in the CD side, the current was flowing from C to D. Follow my words, okay? When the coil was horizontal, the current in the CD side was from C to D and the force was in the upward direction. And when the coil becomes vertical, if the direction of the current in the CD is still the same, the direction of the force will be upward. But now one very interesting thing will happen. Now the line of action of this force will be passing through the axle of the coil. When the coil will become vertical, if the direction of the current in the CD is still the same as when the coil was horizontal, the force will be in the upward direction 
but the important thing is now the line of action of the force will be passing through the axle of the coil when the line of action of a force passes through the axle or the pivot the moment arm becomes zero when the moment arm becomes zero turning effect becomes zero the moment becomes zero because the moment arm is zero okay let's talk about the ab side when the coil is horizontal when the coil is horizontal the current is flowing from a to b the current is flowing from a to b the direction of the force is downward and there is some distance horizontal perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the pivot or the axle so anti clockwise turning effect is produced by this force so what will happen the coil rotates anti clockwise but when the coil will become in the vertical position <clears throat> and if the direction of the current in the ab is still the same as the direction of the current in the ab was from a to b okay so uh, let me stop it for a second okay so i am back again oh actually my television was switched off so i have to switch it on again go on sleeping mode okay so i was telling you about the ab side so when the coil is horizontal the current is flowing from a to b force experienced by the ab is in the downward direction this force produces anti clockwise turning effect so the coil moves anti clockwise from where i am seeing is anti clockwise so when the coil becomes in the vertical position and if the direction of the current is still the same from a to b so the force experience will be downward but now another thing will happen now that force which is in the downward direction its line of action will be passing through the axle because this line of action is passing through the axle its moment arm will become zero the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the axle or the pivot that will become zero so the turning effect produced by that force which was which is acting on the ab will become zero you see when the cd cd sign the force is acting upward so in the horizontal position this force is producing moment but when this becomes vertical the force is still in the upward direction but the line of action of that force is passing through the axle so the moment produces zero on the ab side the force is downward when the coil is horizontal and when the clock it moves anti clockwise rotate anti clockwise and the direction of the current is still the same in the a, from a to b the direction of the force will be downward but the moment arm of this force will become zero because the line of action of the force is passing through the pivot or the axle if the line of action of the force passes through the axle or the pivot that force cannot produce moment <clears throat> another interesting thing if due to inertia if due to inertia you see this cd side it was experiencing a force in the upward direction so when it moves it comes here so when the coil is when the coil is in the vertical position the cd is still experiencing a force in the upward direction 
but now this force cannot produce movement but due to inertia if this moves further from this position you see this force is still in upward direction so when this will move further this force will not let it go further so what will happen the coil will go in the vertical position and there it will be stuck the coil will do this 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 it will be stuck here. it cannot have continuous uh, rotation for that purpose we have introduced here the split rings this split ring commutator is for that function you can see this this split ring commutator let me call it x this this ring which is x it is permanently welded with the ab side this split ring which is this portion of the ring is y it is permanently welded with the dc and here we have gaps you can see here we have gaps so when this coil will rotate and when the coil will become in the vertical position at that moment these rings will be also rotating with the coil so when this cd when this dc side will be on the top and the ab side will be at the bottom the coil will be in the vertical position these gaps will come in front of these carbon brushes so no more electricity will be going into the coil so no more because this gaps these gaps are for this purpose so when the coil becomes vertical these gaps they come in front of these carbon brushes so that connection of the electricity to the coil is disconnected no more electricity going into the coil so but due to the inertia this coil continue rotating and when this continues rotating this cd this x ring or this cd which was before it was connected with the negative terminal of the battery after passing through the vertical position this this wire ring will come on that side and this ab <coughs> which is connected with the x ring which is connected with this positive terminal of the battery when the wire was okay dear students i am back again there was an interruption so okay so we were talking about uh, so we were talking about <clears throat> here we have a basic diagram of a dc motor and so we were talking about that how this uh, split ring commutator helps you to produce continuous rotation so the one very basic step we learned is that uh, this coil a b c d when the current is introduced from here and here we have a downward force on the a b side on the c d side we have an upward force so this coil rotates and when this coil becomes in the vertical position and then it becomes very important to change the direction of the forces acting on the cd side and the ab side you know on the cd side or the force is acting in the upward direction so in this position in this horizontal position the direction of the force on the cd side is in the upward direction and the direction of the force on the ab side is in the downward direction so when the coil becomes in the vertical position the direction of the force has to be changed so the make the uh, motor rotate or this coil rotate continuously it is important that when the coil becomes in the vertical position the direction of the force acting on the cd side should reverse when the coil moves uh, beyond the vertical position the direction of the force on the cd should become downward and the direction of the force on the ab should become upward so how you will achieve this for that purpose we have this split ring commutator and the for reversing the direction of the force acting on the cd we reverse the direction of the force in on the cd side and to change that 
or reverse the direction of the force acting on the AB. We reverse the direction of the force. Uh, sorry, we reverse the direction of the current in the AB side. For that purpose, the split ring commutator is used. So when the coil becomes vertical, uh, these gaps they come in front of the carbon brushes, and when the coil rotates beyond that vertical position in the anti-clockwise manner, this X ring, which was connected with the positive terminal, when the coil rotates beyond the vertical position, this X ring comes in contact with this carbon brush. And so the current flowing in the AB starts flowing from B to A because it comes in contact with the negative terminal of the battery. When the uh, coil moves beyond the vertical position, the wiring, which was permanently connected with the CD, <clears throat> when it, it rotates beyond the vertical position, this wiring, which is uh, previously connected with the negative terminal of the battery, after it moves beyond the vertical position, the wiring becomes in contact with the carbon brush, uh, which is connected with the positive side of the battery. So you see, to we what we do with the help of the split ring commutator, we reverse the direction of the current in the coil. So in the CD, <clears throat> in this position, the current is flowing from C to D. <clears throat> and the direction of the force is upward. When it will pass the vertical position, the current in the CD will start flowing from D to C, and the direction of the force will become downward. In this position, in the AB side, the current is flowing from A to B, and the direction of the force is downward. So when this coil will become in the vertical position, the direction of the current will reverse and it will start flowing from B to A. And the direction of the force acting on the AB side will be then upward. So you see, by when, whenever the coil passes from the vertical position, the direction of the current in its sides is reversed and that reverses the forces the direction of those forces acting on the sides and this makes sure that the coil rotates continuously okay let's move to the next slide so you will learn it uh, step by step okay i have already explained you this uh, slide okay so here you know uh, we have a simple diagram of a dc motor and you can see here we have a battery and this is the positive side of the battery, and this is the negative side of the battery. So this positive side of the battery is connected with this carbon brush, and this carbon brush and this battery, they are stationary. This is connected with this uh, split ring uh, commutator, and this split ring commutator is connected with this side of the rectangular coil, and then this side of the rectangular coil is connected with this split ring and through this carbon brush it is connected with the negative terminal of the battery and in this our discussion we are talking about uh, um, conventional current so the current is flowing from the positive terminal of the battery through this coil and back to the negative terminal of the battery here we have two north pole and the south pole because in this side, this right side of the coil, the current is flowing in that direction. With the red arrow, we have shown the direction of the current. So if you apply the left-hand rule, you will came to know, let's apply the left-hand rule. Uh, the magnetic field is from north to south. The current is going in that direction. So on this side, a downward force will act. And you can see with this arrow, we have shown that a force in the downward direction will be acting. On this side of the coil, you know the current is coming uh, towards me. And let's apply the left hand rule. Uh, the current is coming towards me. Uh, the magnetic field is uh, from, uh, the current is coming towards me. The magnetic field is from north to south. 
my thumb is pointing upward so what will happen this coil this left side of the coil will experience a upward force okay so this coil is mounted on an axle so it can rotate about this axle so this force and this force this force is acting downward this force is acting upward they will create a couple and due to that couple turning effect will be produced in this coil and this coil will start rotating in a clockwise manner so <clears throat> this is the very basic structure of the dc motor <clears throat> i hope that you have understood okay so here you you see uh, again uh, when the coil that the previous coil ab uh, let me show you that first this coil which was ab you see the ab side of the coil is on the on the on this side on on the left side and the cd is on the right side the cd here is connected with the negative terminal and the ab is connected with the positive terminal the ab is permanently welded with the x and the cd is permanently connected with the y and here are the gaps in the in the splittering commutator so this is the horizontal that's the first diagram so when the coil was rotating in the uh, anti clockwise manner the coil will become vertical when the coil will become vertical you see the cd will come on the top and the ab will be in the bottom the coil is now in the vertical position the this wire ring was permanently welded with the cd side and this x ring was permanently welded with the ab side so you can see they are rotating with the coil so these gaps between the rings these gaps are now in front of the carbon brushes so due to the gaps what happens now there is no electricity because the gaps are in front of the carbon brushes so no electricity can enter into this coil so the in, in the vertical position there is no electricity in this coil but due to the inertia you know inertia the due to the inertia the coil will not stop here so when the coil is in the vertical position the gaps of the splittering commutators they are in front of the carbon brushes so no current is coming into the coil but due to the inertia so no current is coming no force is acting on the sides of the coil so no uh, turning effect is produced and but due to the inertia the coil will continue rotating in the anti clockwise manner so when the coil will rotate beyond this vertical position what will happen this wire ring will come in contact with the x uh, with uh, sorry not with the x with the positive side of the battery and this x when it will rotate beyond this point clockwise uh, sorry anti clockwise this x will come in contact with this carbon brush so what i am saying when this coil will move beyond this point this vertical position in the anti clockwise manner so this wiring will come in contact with the positive side of the battery and this wiring will come in contact with the negative side of the battery so the current flowing in the cd will reverse before the cd was in contact with the negative side of the battery so the current was flowing from c to d when the coil moves uh, beyond the vertical position the cd comes the cd side of the coil comes in contact with the positive terminal of the battery so the current starts flowing from d to c so ab which was before in contact with the positive side of the battery the current was flowing from a to b when the coil becomes vertical the current stops flowing and when the coil moves beyond this vertical position in the anti clockwise manner the ab side of the coil comes in contact with the negative terminal of the battery so the current starts flowing from b to a so the important thing is that uh, before that vertical position 
the current in the cd side was flowing from c to d and after that vertical position the current in the cd side starts flowing in the from d to c you see the direction of the current has reversed when the direction of the current in the cd side has reversed the direction of the force acting on the cd side will also reverse before this vertical position the force on the cd side was in the upward direction but after this vertical position uh, when the current in the cd will reverse the direction of the force will also reverse and the direction of the force now will be in the downward direction when the ab was before this vertical position the force on the ab was downward and when the ab side uh, when the coil reaches the vertical position and moves anti clockwise beyond this vertical position the current in the ab side changes before it was flowing from a to b now after the vertical position it will flow from b to a the direction of the force before was uh, towards the bottom and after the vertical position the direction of the force on the ab will be in the upward direction so this is the basic function of the split ring commutator then the the coil move uh, becomes in the vertical position what the split ring do it reverses the direction of the current in the sides of the coil and this reverses the direction of the force acting on them and this makes sure that the coil rotate continuously so very important concept okay let's move to next one when the coil is in the vertical position the current is cut off because the split ring commutator xy is not in contact with the carbon brushes i told you that gaps come in front of the carbon brushes so the rings are no more in contact with the carbon brushes so no more current is entering in the coil the momentum of the coil however carries it past the vertical position momentum is uh, you know uh, due to the inertia you can say in your course you will say due to the inertia or momentum momentum is basically the product of the mass and the velocity product of mass and velocity of a body so due to the momentum the body will continue moving due to inertia the body will continue moving so there was no forces acting but due to the momentum the coil will continue rotating beyond the vertical position so now you see after it has moved beyond the vertical position uh, in the anti clockwise manner so what has ha what happened here the cd side is on now now on the left side and the ab has reached on the right side when we started this discussion the ab was on the left side and the cd was on the right side so when the coil is rotating anti clockwise is you see the ab was on the the ab was on the left side so when the coil rotated it reached the vertical position and then it rotated further now the ab has reached on the right side before the cd was on the right side and the coil rotated anti clockwise the cd reached at the top and now the cd has reached on the left side because now the cd is in contact with the positive terminal of the battery through this ring and through this carbon brush the force acting on the cd is now downward and the force ab you know the ab here <clears throat> it is now connected with the negative terminal of the battery now the force acting on the ab is in the upward direction when the ab was here the force acting was downward but when the ab is on this side the force acting is upward you see the direction of the current in the ab has reversed the direction of the force has reversed before when the ab was here the current was flowing from a to b and the direction of the force was downward when the ab is here the direction of the, the direction of the current is from b to a and the direction of the force is upward when the cd was here 
when the cd was on the uh, right side the direction of the current was from c to d and the direction of the force was upward but when the cd reaches on this left side the direction of the current is from d to c and the direction of the force is downward you see uh, when the coil has moved beyond the vertical position the direction of the current in its side ab and the side cd has reversed and the direction of the forces acting on them has also reversed and this helps to make the coil rotate continuously about its axis the direction of the currents flowing through the wire section ab and cd is now reversed an upward force now acts on the ab and a downward force acts on the cd i have already explained it to you as the coil continues to rotate in the anti clockwise direction in a dc motor uh, remember these words okay remember these words in a dc motor the function of the split ring commutator is to reverse the direction of the current in the coil every half a revolution this occurs whenever the commutator changes contact from one branch to the other this ensures that the coil will always turn in one direction here the last thing which we will be discussing, uh, discussing is that the the turning effect or the speed of the coil or the turning effect on a current carrying coil in a dc motor can be increased how you can increase the speed of a dc motor to see uh, you here we have a coil and that coil was on a axle what you do you put a iron core iron core whenever you see an actual dc motor it will always have a iron core and on that core you will see that the wire is worn and the wire is always uh, on on a iron core so put a iron the coil on an iron core it will it will concentrate your magnetic field and when the magnetic field will become stronger what will happen the turning effect of the coil will become a current carrying coil in a dc motor will be increased another way of increasing the turning effect of the current carrying coil in a dc motor is by an we in in the design which we have studied we have used only a single turn of the coil but in real life in the practical life we do not use a single turn we use hundreds and thousands of turns so increase the number of turns of the coil the more the number of the turns of the coil the more will be the turning effect or of the motor okay so and the third factor on which it depends is the increase the current in the coil the more the current in the coil provide the motor with more current and the speed of the coil will be uh, or the motor will be uh, it will be faster the turning effect of the coil will become uh, larger okay so let's move to the next thing again uh, it's the last slide and you can see here we have a very simple design of a dc motor here you have two magnets you can see two magnets and here we have a coil a rectangular coil this side the right side of the coil is connected with this carbon brush and the left side of the coil is connected with this sorry i said carbon brush this uh, split ring commutator and this side is connected with this split ring commutator so this split ring commutator is welded with this coil so when the coil will rotate this split ring commutator will this ring will also rotate and this is welded with this uh, side of the coil so these two pieces these split ring commutators they are rotating they are rotating with the coil here we have carbon brushes these carbon brushes are stationary they are permanent this carbon brush is permanently connected with the positive side of the battery this carbon brush is permanently connected with the negative side of the battery this carbon brush and this battery this carbon brush and this battery they are stationary they are not moving but this this these rings 
and this coil is rotating. So no, now you see um, when the current will flow from here to the carbon brush through this ring into the coil and this left side of the coil, it will experience a force. Um, let's say it will experience a force in the upward direction and this side of the coil will experience a force in the downward direction. So it will start rotating in a clockwise manner. So then the coil will become uh, vertical. These gaps, these gaps, they will come in front of the carbon brushes and the supply of the current will be cut off. But due to the momentum, and due to the momentum of the coil, the coil will not stop in the, in the vertical position. Due to the momentum, it will go beyond the vertical position in the clockwise manner. So when it will go beyond this, so what will happen? This dotted side of the coil that will be on the right side, and this continuous side of the which we represented with the continuous line, that side of the coil will come, and it will come in contact with this brush. This side will come in contact with this brush. So you see, uh, this side it was previously connected with the positive, and after moving beyond the vertical position. Uh, this side will come in contact with the negative side of the battery. This side here, it is in contact with the negative side. Then this will rotate and it will pass beyond the vertical position in the clockwise manner. This side will come in contact with this, this side, okay, positive side. So you see the direction of the current will reverse once the coil will uh, rotate beyond the vertical position. When the direction of the current in its sides will reverse, the direction of the forces acting on these sides will also reverse. And this helps to continuously rotate the coil in the clockwise manner or in the same manner. So this is the DC motor. Um, I have tried my best to explain it to you, but due to, because, uh, due to the restrictions, uh, because I don't have that much uh, technology with me, <coughs> animations, and I have tried my best that to explain it to you. If you still need help, please contact me. I will refer you some other teachers' videos. They have very good animations, and hopefully there are five or six minutes videos on DC motor. Rest of the topics, I am sure that they are 100% clear to you. But about the DC motor, if you have some doubts, tell me through the comments and I will uh, send you links about uh, of the videos of some other teachers, very good teachers who have used very good animations. And from there, I will, I hope that if it's not clear, then by using those videos, which have very good animations in them, you will be able to understand. Uh, I can send those links uh, in, if you ask me in the comments of this video, I will send you those things. So that's it. This was the chapter electromagnetism. It ends at the DC motor. I hope that it's clear to you and thank you very much everybody. And I hope that I am to some help to you in, in learning physics and please uh, everybody, uh, once you have listened this lecture, please note down these lectures in the notebook and don't forget to read these chapters from your textbook. Reading the concept from the textbook is very, very important. Okay, because you see the academic language, the proper academic language of the physics, uh, you will learn when you will read your textbook. So it's very important to see the lectures, whether you see my lectures or your own uh, teacher's lectures or any other teacher's lecture, but reading your textbook is very important. I hope that it will be helpful to you. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day and God bless you all. Thank you very much.